Here at Intoxia Reviews, we intellectually dissect the art of cinema, scene by scene. Here's some clips. Oh, he is. It's just a fucking big wooden doll full of cum chasing kids around. <laughs> you look up guys who poop in a bag. I think that's where you'll find them. Because he is hurt. It's probably just in your search history anyway, isn't it? <laughs> this movie fucking blows. So don't forget to subscribe to Intoxicated Reviews on all places you find podcasts. Except Spotify. We're working on it. Hey everyone, Chris Hansen here of Hansen vs. Predators and Catcher Predator. Why don't you have a seat right over there and listen to Kyle and Brandon, our podcast. According to my chat logs, Kyle and Brandon have interesting guests. No, I hated it. Yeah. Everybody's sweaty, everybody's on drugs, so they're super sweaty but also touchy. And then they touch your face, then you leave there, and the next day you have pimples. Fantastic conversation. He's underground in a lab, floating in a tank of water because he almost died. And most important, no predators. Do not take product if you are hypersensitive. Oh, hey there, Internet. Welcome back to the Intoxicated Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah McClellan. If you are brand new, this is a comedy variety talk show that gets personal, where I shoot the shit with comedians, creators, and characters about the messiness of life. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. How are you guys doing today? I'm not doing too bad. I'm doing pretty, pretty well. This week on the show, my guest... This week on the show is a returning guest that I've had on a bunch of times. He is a good friend of mine. And the way that I say it is, is when Mark's on the show, it's because I really need to talk about something. It's Mark. Mark is back. If you go way back to the early days of the podcast, you know of Mark. Um, We call him Mark, but it is actually my friend Finley, who goes sort of by a podcast name. Just because, hey, listen, not everyone is a comedian that just doesn't give a fuck and can come on and talk about personal shit and have it not affect their professional life, which I understand. So I always appreciate people coming on to be open and have conversations, but not everyone can use their real name. But regardless, this is my good friend Finley. He's been on a bunch of times. We've done episodes about some heavy subject matter. This one, though, is a doozy. Um, This is an episode all about self-improvement. Pretty much that is the broad theme of this episode, although we do dive into how that impacts addiction and recovery. And while Finley and I both have different addictions, the general themes are very similar. So this is about how to improve your life, how to sort of review yourself, and how to really look at the deep dark shit that is making you unhappy and how to change that. This isn't a full comedy episode, but you guys know if you've been following me, I don't always do silly comedy episodes. Sometimes I do like to talk about some more serious stuff, but stuff that I think you'll enjoy and you will learn from. And that is certainly this episode. So you'll notice there are some times in this episode that it gets a bit uncomfortable. And I did ask a question at one point that was very much so impacted by my personal biases with my personal experiences. And we hash it out like friends do. And I'm all about having uncomfortable conversations, as long as both people are open and willing to learn from each other, I think it's important to have those conversations. So like I've said, every now and then I have Finley on and we we dive deep into things. It's a little bit different from what you're used to hearing, but I personally like doing it for me because I like to talk about the things that impact me personally from time to time. So please let me know what you thought of this episode. Do you want to hear more episodes like this? Because I will, I will do it. I will dive into that. And if you've been listening to the show, can you do some things for me? Can you make sure that you're following Intoxicated on social media? Um, Instagram is kind of the main jam. So that is at Intoxicated Podcast on Instagram and also on Facebook. On Twitter, it is in underscore intoxicated. You can email questions, comments, and feedback to intoxicatedpodcast at gmail.com. Another thing you can do is you can leave an Apple Podcasts rating or review. That is fantastic. And that really does help the show out. But of course, but of course, the best way to support the show is by word of mouth. So tell a friend and give this a share on social media. I will repost it. I will respond. And I would super appreciate it 
because this podcast has been going on for a long time. I, you know, I'm coming up on 170 episodes. I do this thing all by myself. So any form of support is appreciated more than you know. Now, if you're a huge fan and you want to take it even a step further, I am going to just talk briefly about Patreon. I recently revamped the Intoxicated Patreon to be a little more realistic to what I can give um, for Patreons. There's some new levels up on there. So if you go to patreon.com backslash intoxicated, there are three levels starting at $3 and going up to $10 per month. We have guest spot, middle and headliner, which I thought was so cute because it ties in with comedy. But if you did want to throw some money to intoxicated, rest assured it's going towards the podcast. It's going towards things like equipment and marketing, maybe merch at some point. I'm not working right now. And everything I've done for this podcast has been an investment. And a lot of that has been my own money. So this is a way to support the show that goes above just reviewing or just spreading the word. With all that being said, I did want to thank a new Patreon that signed up recently, a friend of mine, a past guest of the show, Carmen. Thank you so much for signing up at the $5 level. I love Carmen to bits. She's been on the podcast. She was on one of my most notable episodes, which was the Me Too episode, where we talked all about our experiences with sexual assault. It was a heavy one, but it was one of those episodes that I'll never forget. And she was also on the Aziz Ansari episode where we talked about similar issues. So big shout out to Carmen. Big thank you to you for signing up. I appreciate it so much. So again, if you are interested in that, check out the Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash intoxicated. And that's all for now, guys. I hope all is well with you. And I hope you enjoy this week's episode with Finley. All right. I love when stuff like that happens. 30 gigs, gigs we're good. I have to check how much space I have every time. Because sometimes I'll be mid-recording and I'll get a message. Your computer's running out of space! <laughs> I'm like, crap. Yeah, we've done that before. We had that happen on a show. Yeah. I still, I'm still not rich enough to afford. And I actually do have a lot of space on this computer I because I have two drives. Yeah. Uh, I have this D drive, which I put all my finished videos in. It's the only D you're getting. Oh, fuck you. It's true, though. I, I can't argue with that. More peyote. I can't get mad about it because it's true. Yeah. Well, um, you can. You can get mad about the facts of your life. It just doesn't do anything. It's true. Yeah. Like, there's the only thing that changes the matters and facts of your life is your actions in them. I was listening to a podcast just before you got here that was talking about, like, thoughts, feelings, and behaviors and how thoughts are actually the easiest, easiest one to, like, behaviors are hard and it's really hard to change how you feel, but your thinking and yes. how you, th your thoughts are the easiest one of those three That's just CBT. to change. Like, that's just cognitive behavioral therapy. Listen, I'm not a bougie no, bitch no. who can afford therapy. I don't know this shit. First of all, anyone can afford therapy. You just not have to. me. Take everyone a look at my bank account. Therapy. Everyone can afford therapy. <laughs> everyone can afford therapy. I'm kidding. No one can. Uh, but you can get some amount of like group or like if you needed to absolutely talk, there's avenues you can go and talk. Yeah, there's. Yeah. It, you need to navigate the system a little more yeah. if you don't have the money. Yeah. And so you might end up in group instead of like a dedicated session, which. Most people get hung up on anything that they want to change. They get hung up on, and like Tim Ferriss will talk about like 20, 80, 20. And Ramit Sumesh, who's like a financial guy, will talk about like 85 rule, like getting to 85%. Yeah, you mentioned that last night. I'm curious. But I so, think, well, let's open the episode first because this is how we always do. We get into this. And then I'm like, I have to introduce my guest. And, and I was going to talk to you before I didn't record, but nope. I just got right into it because that's how I do. And you know what? Podcasting is hard when you're depressed. I'm glad I'm still doing it. Yeah. So what you're going to get is what you're going to get. Fuck it. <laughs> it's like when people come over, I'm like, the place is a mess, but I didn't kill myself. <laughs> Honestly, when things are not good in your life, the littlest victories are the victories you hold. Right? Yeah. It's so true. You know, you're not doing that thing where you open the episode, though. I know. Okay. We are here with like a thousandth time returning guest. Hey, guys. So let's, let's count them. A guy At with a standardly free Sunday, Finley. Oh my gosh, it's Finley, but you might know him as Mark. For all intents and purposes, when we have shows, I am Mark in a written description. I have a real job, and I don't really like people finding me on Google. And so, Mark is just a guy named Finley. Hi. 
Uh, I'm also related to Shannon. Who's also. Who's also been on the show. And one of my best way friends. Way too many times. Uh-huh. You're I love you both right? to bits. You're both two of my favorite people. I'm the better one. I mean, be- you're not. No one's better than the other. Okay, that's not Except true. she's better than you. No, <laughs> that's not true. All people are better than other people. However, my sister is better than me. She's a I, nicer person. You guys can you both of you individually is better than most people. That's very true. I'm just better than most people. I'm actually a total piece of shit a lot of the time. Um, so, like, let's be real here. Most people are total pieces of shit with good moments. And we just only romanticize the good moments and we ignore. Ooh. Like, let's be honest here. Most people are garbage. Mm-hmm. And you just choose to hang out with them because it, the same reason you stay with your bank your whole life. Because you've always been with that bank. So why would you change your bank? It's banking? comfortable. Comfortable and easy and it continues mm-hmm. on. And so you'll end up getting in, like, not abusive, but probably relationships that eventually start to degrade um, like you had talked about in the pre-roll, like the fact that thoughts are easy to change, behaviors aren't, mm-hmm. um, and feelings aren't. Well, most people also, when they're changing anything, get caught with like optimizing everything. So like if you're going to start working out tomorrow, well, your diet's got to be good and you got to have the running shoes and you got to have yeah. the... Yeah, everybody wants to have everything to go and do it. When in fact, if you just got off the couch at that moment and walked for 20 minutes, you're better off than someone that shopped for shoes. Right. So most people are concerned with minutia, and as we get older, I'm assuming you don't want more drugs. Probably mm, shouldn't. I'll take one more. Cool. Um, so most people are concerned with like the minutia of anything, which is like if I want to lose weight, I got to be the best. If I want to save money, I have to do it perfectly. There's no point in saving money if I don't have thousands of dollars. Yep. Like most of that's complete bullshit. Yep. Because your only goal is to be better than the people around you or the people you are lateral to at your current position well saving 10 bucks a month instantly makes you better than anyone that saves zero also too i think we compare to other people when we should be comparing to ourselves like in other words like the shittiest version of yourself you can just do better than that that's be better than you yesterday that's That's, yeah that's something yeah rather than uh, like i i'm starting to look at it that way versus other people because that's just recipe for disaster well comparing yourself to anyone generally speaking is a terrible idea because like you don't have full access to their life no so like you can only judge yourself against the superficial standards of everyone else the great dinner they cooked on instagram we really get to this topic a lot the whole like social media culture but like in any way your friends are not like most of your friends or at least your acquaintances are not telling you how bad their friday was they're just going to tell you about the one great thing they did friday because that's the kind of conversation we're trained to have it's put your best face forward everyone is trained to do that and because of that we're all telling each other fake stories that don't equate to anything um, and then we feel shitty about ourselves because it's like we're not doing as much as that person. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, if I only tell you the good things I do in a week, my week you're gonna look fucking dope. And you're going to look damn good, but like you're not going to talk about the breakdown you had or yeah, you're not gonna the talk anxiety about attacks. Anxiety attacks, relapses, any of the real shit. And then when you do start talking to someone about that stuff, it's usually only a few people. But then like most people don't have a very good support network. So like as mm-hmm. soon and most people also overstate the value of their support network to all my friends that may listen to this. I love all of you. This is not a comment against you. <laughs> um, however, um, everyone in the world will say like if you ever needed me, call me in the middle of the night. I'll be there. Um, You're one of those people to me. Yes. But yeah. if you actually have to make that phone call, you will quickly determine how many of them you are not comfortable in asking for that. Yes. And also how few of them you actually fucking believe. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, whatever. I'm not saying that friendship equals someone else's responsibility. Like You have a duty only to what you can perform for your friends, family, whatever. Um, and you'll obviously like hire, like put those into a tier or a hierarchy. But at the end of the day, most people don't really want to do like, if you wrote someone right now and said, I'm feeling a little suicidal, most people are not going to help you. Do you know what? Um, that's so funny that you said that. Cause just on Tuesday, I had a really bad day yep. and I had a bit of a things. There's a lot going on. <laughs> 
personally, and I have a lot of anger about a lot of lot of different issues. But it was kind of one of those moments where I had a really supercharged day the day before of just like being wired, talking to a lot of people, and expelling a lot of energy. And then the next day, I just totally crashed, and all the emotions came like they literally caved in on me to a point where I was breaking down. And I literally had this like moment of like, yeah, this is it. I want to end it. Like I want to like, fuck this. I hate this. I messaged someone and they did take me out of it. Yeah. Um, because they were like, first of all, it was really funny. Cause they, it was, he won't care that I'm saying this. It was Scott McLean. Shout out to Scott. Yeah. Uh, good friend of mine. But like he was, he said, I was just like, I, my brain for whatever reason, my brain is telling me to walk into traffic. And he's like, well, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> that was his first response, which was really funny. Good response. Because he was just like, don't do that. You get up, do something productive, anything productive around the house, like anything at all. Just do something. Yeah. And he, he was like talking me through it. I ended up writing a bit for stand up about it that I'm legit so proud of. Yeah. Because I found some funniness. In this really weird, dark breakdown. Well, realistically, depending on, like, your background, like, we're not necessarily trained that good to, like, look after ourselves or to, like, care about ourselves or to, like, handle things that are not great. Like, God, if you're no. Catholic or Christian, you've got a lot of guilt, hang-ups, and issues because that's what Catholicism does. Sorry, guys. Um, it does. It really fucks you up. But if you look at like any other religion or any other faith, like there's a lot. Like I'm a shitty Buddhist, um, as I've mentioned. And is that the about, title? I'm, Do we have the title? I'm a shitty non, Buddhist. Well, I'm a non secular Buddhist, but I'm a shitty Buddhist because I don't really care enough. And like I'm not going to talk to you about like Dharma and the reincarnation. I'm secular in that. Like I don't really care about the metaphysics of it like uh -huh. i don't really care about the whole reincarnation but like the things that you do to get reincarnated i'm still going to care about because like they're being a good person oh uh, okay yeah yeah yeah. and there's the strive for like equanimity which is the only term i'll hopefully use but it's like the state of happiness in all things and the way What's to it called again equanimity. Equ equanimity equanimity that's yeah. a hard one yeah it is and it's one of those things where you try to strive for happiness in all things but you strive for happiness in all things by like purposely like not projecting your wants and needs onto things like when so mm. when someone lets you down like did they let you down or did you project a want or an expectation onto them that they then didn't fulfill and so you're unhappy and spiteful normally it's the second one yeah well yeah but like and in some instances people like do owe you because of like whatever social contract you're in with them they'll owe you some amount of like emotional support and you owe them like because of the relationship but then anything beyond that and even that is an expectation you're putting on someone so like i can hope for the best from most people but at the end of the day i have to just enjoy the fact that none of this is forever there's a concept mm -hmm. of impermanence so like yeah in buddhism the moment like that you're in is the only moment you can really really concern yourself you can look past in your past and you can determine things that would make you better and you can get better and you can consider and meditate upon those things and you can consider and plan for what you want to do in the future but really all you have is that moment and you can be happy in that moment regardless of anything as long as you try and get to a state of not projecting your will onto the universe which is a lot but that's it's a religion that's, it's a religion that's why that's it's what a they religion do. yeah 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 uh, but like in um, in doing that like i'm a shitty buddhist in that I don't really read and I don't really care and I've gone through a lot of the, like the books and stuff when I do, but like I'm not here to like I'm not going to use every term and tell you everything and tell you how you can ascend and what being a Buddha is and any of that shit. Mm -hmm. Just try and be happy in any moment and like focus on not necessarily even focus on the good, but focus on not projecting what you want out of the world and just deal with the, what the world gives you. Work for the best outcome. But know that anything other than your your working is is more or less out of your hands. Like you can try and ask for favors and you can try and do what you can do, but however it turns out is however it turns out. You tried your best, cool. You did what you needed to do in the moment to make it a good moment, absolutely. But you can't make it a certain thing and you can't be upset when it is not that certain thing because that is just putting an expectation on something that will eventually tear you apart. And that is literally every time I get upset, like I have to remind myself of that shit 
and you gotta like like the same way you can't change your your feelings and your habits you can change your thoughts basically it's cbt cognitive behavior therapy where you like you try and retrain your thoughts when you have the thoughts well for me that thought retraining is based on like my faith is a strong word but like shitty buddhism yes where i like look at what am I supposed to be doing in this moment? What am I taught to do? What am I supposed to be doing? Like, have I done everything I can do in this moment? If yes, I have to stop. Yeah. Like, you cannot go down a rabbit hole. You cannot let anxiety take you down because if you let it take you down, like, if you focus on it and you get, and, like, you can absolutely get trapped in it. But, like, the more, <sighs> like, and this goes to, like, relapsing, which I've done. Yeah. Alcoholic. We've talked about it in other episodes, I think. Um, mm-hmm. You have to be willing to work on your problem, mm-hmm. but like you're probably not going to avoid it forever. Like you're going to hit a relapse if you're an alcoholic, probably. Like I've never met an alcoholic that was like, oh yeah, day one in the program, last yeah, 35 right? years. Nope. No one sure. is that. You'll, I've been in another program for a, a program. Cause hey, I hey. my, oh. No, oh, I can't. Yeah, you can't really. Sorry. Like, well, I won. I, not really the program I'm in, but like. I mean, a program, a program, most programs have a rule of like, you're not really allowed to like on media or anything talk about specifically which program, because then you're acting as an ambassador of it. And when you go wrong, you can reflect on right. any of the groups that you're involved in. So like I am in a program and I do steps. Okay. Um, steps are mostly the same amongst mon- most programs, even if they're not like, yeah, AA has like the 12 and mm-hmm. the 12 and 12. And mm-hmm. then, like, uh, SMART has its own system. I think it's called SMART. And then there's a bunch of other systems. Most of them, like, even Russell Brand, like, rewrote the 12 steps of, like, can you unfuck yourself? It's like, yeah, you just rewrote 12 things with fuck. Russell Brand. Um, but <laughs> I it's, think he's really smart. He's absolutely really he's smart. Doesn't mean smart. he's not a douchebag. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Don't break up with Katy Perry over text, you asshole. Yeah, it happens. I'm sorry. But then in... in like what you're building to or, or what you're you're focusing on it's like whatever system it is as long as you take it seriously and as long as you actually work it whatever program you're in mm-hmm. um you start to notice the patterns that will read lead to your relapses or even can lead to like a relapse is basically any emotional like downfall that results in for me results in using again um it could easily be restated that a relapse could also be like entertaining your anxiety so much as to have a panic attack you triggered your emotional disorder that's all it really boils down to a relapse is just hitting a trigger and following through with what that trigger results in which is using or or whatever self-destructive behavior you're trying to avoid right so if i like look back at relapses i have like it took a while but I can see patterns in it. You can see what led you to that relapse? Not necessarily or... what led to it. Sometimes you can see what A, B, and C were. But sometimes you can just look at, like, most of the time I relapse on a Sunday. Really? So, like, Sunday is a bad day for me. Statistically. So, like, on Sundays I'm a little bit more guarded. Um, I make sure that I have something to do on a Sunday. I have plans on a Sunday. Um, I will, like, avoid, like, I don't. My triggers are, are mostly, like, work stress and, um, like, personal stress. So, like, I don't maintain as many personal relationships anymore um, because I find that, like, when you put faith and stock in people, odds are they're going to fuck up, which, like, until I get to a point where I can not put my expectations on them. Big dang. Yes, but, like, if you're – that's also a – that's a me problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can't control anyone else. You can control yourself. So it's right. a me problem. So it's like, what is my problem in this day? It's like, okay. So I had an unfair expectation or expectation that couldn't be fulfilled by this person or by this situation. And, like, at the end of the day, like, even if it's a million other things that went wrong, I'm only responsible for my actions and what I did. Like, I can blame those things. I can blame friends that let me down. I can blame stress at work. I can blame... Um, any number of things for my relapses. And I can even blame the relapses on the things that I do that are destructive in the relapse or during periods of use. But, like, those are only data points that allow me to refine either properly living in the future or things to avoid in the past. And, yeah, they add detail to the scenario or the relapse or the the wrong that I did do. But at the end of the day, I'm still an actor in that that wrong. And so in being that actor... I have to take the responsibility for what I can take responsibility for, which is my interactions, my reactions, like my shit. Like, cause even if you let a friend abuse you 
or like you get let down by a friend like if you did some programs will have you make lists so like a list of all the people you harmed a list of all the people you resent a list of your fears uh every adult watching this i have you have no idea what you're actually afraid of um you mean like in terms of relationships no or you frame everything in relationships because that's your problem um it's an area of pain for you. So you that's a lens yes. that you constantly look through. Actually, and that go- it's funny because uh, I was thinking about all your episodes and how your first episode you said something that like sticks has stuck with me for so long, which is like that narrative I put out about like not getting laid and how it's really about yeah. not having intimacy or like not feeling appreciated by men. Because yeah. you literally said you don't feel appreciated by men. And you don't. You actually don't just want sex, but you put it out there as that. Cause yeah. it's, it's easier. You don't just need dick. You need a hug. Yeah. Like you need a connection. You need intimacy. Like that yeah. is a thing that you feel is lacking and that you want. But it's like you can put the expectation and blame the people. But it's like what are you responsible for? One, what's the fear that motivates you to stay in something that doesn't work? right or or to keep chasing something that doesn't work is yeah. it is it the fear of being alone is it the fear of being unloved is it the fear of i know what it is absolutely you do but have you dove into why why that's a tricky one um like why i have the fear yeah because in my case like we're kind of talking about addiction here in, in both situations but mine's the lamest addiction love addiction which there's no uh the first thing program the for integrate it you denigrate it. And yes, there are programs for it. Not here. Who cares? Most AA meetings and most any meetings are not here. They're online. Right. You, If you want to find a solution to your problem, mm-hmm. you can look and you can find it. Mm-hmm. But it might not be a 100% solution that's instant. So most people resist that because you don't want to solve 85% of your problem. You want to solve 100% of your problem. Well, 85% is generally speaking, like Ramit Samesh is a financial advisor We'll talk about like 85 percent and it's basically just like what could you get going that puts you better than everybody else it's rapid that would work i don't need you to be perfect i just need you to be doing more than you're doing now because to get to 85 percent is or like 80 percent in anything is really easy compared to getting from 80 to 100 like you can be in a program and working to be sober that is like 80% of what any program is going to do for you. Mm -hmm. But like it's then doing the work of the program or whatever program you're in that will get you from 80 to 100. And if you're not actively trying to get from 80 to 100, then yeah, there's a problem. But like most people, because they can't get to 100, don't even try for 85. They're like, well, that's not going to solve my problem. It's like, cool. Stop talking to toxic people. Stop chasing unavailable men. Um, Stop using every dating app. Um, Mm -hmm. and like, stop just cheapening it to the, the quality of dick. Like try and like, say you're looking for an actual, like whatever, and you might find a guy that's not ideal, but like, I'll be honest with you. I've driven an adequate, like fucking Subaru and Pretza for a number, like drove it for years. It was not my dream car, but it got me from A to B and it was always there and it always did what I want. Mm. Like most people because they can't get the ideal of something won't even try for what they can get or what would be beneficial to them it's like yeah if you ask me who i want to date it's probably someone smoking hot you ask me what i want to drive it's probably an expensive sports car you ask me where i want to live it's probably a penthouse but none of those things are things i can just go out and whim into my life so it's like what can i have that of those things is the most important to me and it's like, look, you want a dependable, emotionally available dude? Go find one. Who cares if the thing is, is like, ideal. I don't know if I do want that though, and that's the deep issue. Do you? I feel like something inside me is not attracted to that. I don't know what it is. It's really fucked up. Well, what do you actually want? Like, what's your goal? With with a relationship? Yeah. Um, someone who feels the same way back. The same back. way is a is a zone of what do you mean by that? Has feelings for me back and can say, I have feelings for you back. Like, okay. and admit it. Yeah. Not be ashamed of it. That's a big one. Because I think I've been in situations where. So you're listing wanting an emotionally available person. The thing I said. You... Yeah, I know. But I don't know if like that's what I'm. 
attract like the attraction thing is what is so like there's a difference like you want that with someone you find attractive yes so like i love that i I have a i heard a joke about this years ago where it's like i think it was peter white it was like when you ask a woman what she wants she'll be like oh i want someone funny and compassionate and understanding and it's like okay those are all qualities um like describe the guy that you want those qualities to have. Because, like, you do need both. You need to be physically attracted to someone and you need to be emotionally compatible with them. That's really hard to find. Um, but, like, most people, I don't be an asshole here, uh, like, list your ideal guy right now. Like, just fat, fat, facts and figures. Height, oh weight, oh, like physical, income. Physical stuff? Yeah. Oh, I, I don't really know much about height because I'm short and I don't, I've never really cared yeah. about that. They need to be my height or taller. So what, what Not shorter than me. Oh. I have no idea how tall I am. Okay, so you're probably 5'8". No, five, I, seven, I think I'm five, shorter six, than that. 5'5". Five, five. I think I'm probably around 5'3", maybe. Okay, so 5'3". Yeah. So you need a guy that's higher than 5'3". Uh-huh. Okay, what's his weight? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know how much guys weigh. I know how much I weigh. Like, that's all so, I know. I don't know about weight either. Do you want and muscular or do you want, like, dad bod? Do you want... I, I'm okay with a dad bod. Okay. I'm okay with some chunk. What do you want them to earn? Um... And Or does it matter? No one likes dating a broke person. Here's what I'll say about that. I have gone for guys who make a lot of money and i have gone for guys who make less than me i personally and maybe i should care more yeah this is my stance on that my financial shit isn't together right now so i'm not expecting yeah i'm not expecting to date a rich guy because i don't think he'd want to date me you know like you don't know that why but why should i put that expectation out there of like i need someone who makes at least 70k when i'm struggling to even make yeah but like do if if you value someone who is secure i mean secure would be great i think what's more important to me is that they have a passion and that they're actually a hard worker yeah so i don't it's like the hard worker rubric do you judge the hard work by um has a job (laughs) Or maybe a bunch of jobs. So don't date comics. Okay. Um, and a lot of them work. Yeah. A lot of them work. Absolutely a lot of them work. Secondary <laughs> jobs that allow them to do what they want to do. Which, like, is a passion thing, and I respect it. Um, if that's how you judge passion, that's, like, and and, str- and trying, that's great. Mm-hmm. But, like, if you look at what you think you want versus the people that you interact with and um, allow into your life in that space, do you think there's enough of an overlap that what you're doing is healthy? I mean, that's, I don't think it is healthy. I, I, don't, I don't think I am going for the people that on paper I want. Yeah. Why? Um, because I think I'm... S- I don't know, man. It's just, like, you, you talk to someone for two years... <laughs> And you get attracted to them, and so who and cares? they're not. I don't know. No, no, no I don't have an explanation. You're letting time. Does does the time invested? Do you have a sunk, sunk cost fallacy? Absolutely. Mm, stop fucking doing that. <laughs> First no. of all, uh, sunk cost fallacies. For those that don't know, if you've uh, put a lot into something, you tend to try and get it all out. Um, yeah, and I 100 percent have that. Don't fucking do that. Yeah, but how do you get out of that? How do you block them? Yeah. On everything and stop being a whiny little bitch that leaves them available on four other networks aside to one. Like, get them the fuck out of your life. Mm-hmm. I don't care how you do it, but mm-hmm. actually fucking do it. Rip the Band-Aid off. Oh, it's not fun. It's never going to be what you want. Get yeah. the fuck over it. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any idea how many people... Like, when I break up with someone, I don't talk to them anymore unless they are a very special person. So for the most part, if I date you, unless it's over... Like, if it's under seven months, I will probably not talk to you unless we really got along as friends. That's fair. If it was over seven months, I better really fucking like you because there is a solid chance that if the breakup is wrong and it was seven months or or, or over, yeah, I'm done with you because this is painful as shit. Like, my preservation is more important to me than a potential long shot chance that it will go the way that i want and that's i think i'm getting to that point where i start to realize like i literally don't want to ever feel this way again like the hurt yeah like i it's 
it's brought me like to the lowest point in my life and has drained me of so much energy that it's like I never like I almost don't want to like another person for a long time just because I don't want to risk feeling that hurt yeah like because I'm a very open person like I will just be open with you and I will like you and like here's my heart on a silver platter but like I think I gotta put that heart in a birdcage or something for a while well Okay, so if what you're, like, the definition of insanity, which is a stupid old saying that we probably should retire, is, like, yeah. doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Yeah. So if you're continuously doing the exact same relationship yeah. pattern over and over again with the same people, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. I'm an idiot. I know. Okay, then yeah. stop being an idiot. Yeah. I know. That's that's why I don't want to like anyone. But, uh, so, but that's an overreaction. But but I, I just, okay. Just don't like here's, that one person. Here's, I'll rephrase it. I don't want to like anyone who I know doesn't like me back the liking me back has become the number one thing i need <laughs> like top yeah. of the list like quality but then if they don't give you that do you chase validation from the interaction as like look i can't get morphine but i can get whatever this is dopamine or yeah what? like you can't dopamine get the chemical you want but you can get the chemical that you can get so are you just doing it to sustain i have i don't want to anymore then learn to not care about the drug it's just, like just stop like so if we're just purely rational for a second about like the chemistry of a brain like, if you fall in love, you have a rush of chemicals. If you yeah. feel romantic anything, you yeah. have a bunch of brain chemicals. You take those brain chemicals away, you feel shitty. The same way you do if you stop doing coke, you stop doing heroin, you stop smoking. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying it's exactly the same, but, like, Similar. it's yeah. chemicals in your brain that when mm -hmm. they go away, you feel sad. You want the sad to go away, so you go back to the drug. And even if the hit's not as good, you take the hit again. Yeah. Which, like, if you keep taking hits off shitty dudes or people that run, will not eventually get to where you want to be, then you're just doing recreational relationships. Oh, I love that. That's like, a great way to say it. But don't do that. Yeah, no, I know. But, like, but you know you know, but, like, what could you do in a week that would set you on a course to no longer have those interactions? Not looking at what they're doing, blocking, keeping them blocked. Um, that's where I'm at. I don't okay, really know. So I don't really know what's further from that, to be honest. You don't, you don't need to know what's further than that because that's focusing on the minutia of getting to a hundred. What you need to do is enact the beginning of a process yeah. that will allow you to go down a road of improving the areas of your life that you want to have improved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so like what, like, I'm not saying going to a meeting would make someone sober, but I am saying that it's an action in the direction that yes. you want to go. That's right. Like, what could you do this week? Could you block, like, you, you no, no longer looking at their stuff, no mm -hmm. longer seeing what they're doing, mm -hmm. no longer looking for validation. Mm -hmm. All of those are summed up in one action, which is blocking across all networks and then actually fucking sticking to it. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to lose weight, you don't keep a bag of chips in the, yeah. the cupboard. <laughs> yeah. You throw it away and then you don't go to the store and buy more fucking chips. Right. Right. So, like, stop eating chips. <laughs> Chip men. <laughs> if, if you look at relationships as a, a, like, if you're looking at an interaction and it gives you a quick, a quick, cheap, high, or feeling of satisfaction, mm -hmm. that is potato chips, McDonald's, French fries, People Magazine, all the cheap, shitty, convenient things that we can shove in our face to make the world a little bit more numb and to get by. And we all do shit like that. But if you're doing that with relationships and it's getting in the way of you making genuine connection, if it's getting you bitter and not wanting to like anyone and all of those things, you're allowing toxic interactions to push you farther from your goal and shape the way that you look at the world. Mm -hmm. An addict mm -hmm. can very easily blame everyone out there mm -hmm. and say, it's their fault. It's their fault. They misled me. They bought me a drink. They asked me to go to a bar. They gave me another hit. Mm -hmm. You still may the first action of contacting them you still made the interaction to go you still made the conscious decision to take the drink to send the message to check their facebook feed you literally hurt yourself yeah because you wanted to feel a little good or you wanted to feel pain because you're already in negative headspace here's my question i posted this in instagram poll a while ago actually um <clears throat> do you think are you someone who ever 
thinks an apology from someone who's really hurt you would help. Who gives a fuck? Why the fuck do you need someone else's validation to move forward with your fucking life? But that's what I'm wondering. Like, have you ever been hurt no, that by my, someone? That was my answer. I don't care about what anyone has ever done to me because the only thing I can control is my reactions mm. and my interactions. Mm -hmm. I can take that hate and I can hold on to it for a long time. We literally just talked about someone who I think is an asshat this week. Um, I don't care what anybody does. I care what I do. Right. What other people do to have hurt me, if they choose to take the interaction, if they choose to to look at their life, if they choose to evaluate, cool. I, but I'm not ever going to expect it to come, and I'm not going to put any amount of weight or hope in it because that is letting someone else control my fucking life and my fucking mm. mood and how I work forward. Mm -hmm. That is a bad idea. I am only in charge of what I do. If, if someone treated me wrong and feels that they should apologize, I look at that situation and I say, what did I permit to let them do to get the situation to hear where they could hurt me that much? Did I have a fear of being alone and so I wouldn't pull away when I obviously should have? Did I have a fear of being undervalued so I reached too far and supported them too much with no direct benefit for me? If I did those things... Then you can... Then I am only responsible for fixing right. those behaviors and the other person is responsible for whatever the fuck they want to be responsible for. <clears throat> but I can only control and nice. enact upon what I do. Right. So if some guy doesn't show up to give you dick on a Friday <laughs> Here night... We go. This was just last night. Saturday night. Saturday night. <laughs> off by day. Let's be honest here. She wasn't getting Friday either. Um, I love you. I love oh you. Oh my God. That was mean. I'm sorry. But You're not wrong. It's been almost a full pregnancy. If a guy routinely drops the ball, okay? Yes. You are letting, you're giving him the ball to drop. Yes. Over and over again. Yes. You're right. So all the anger and all the hurt you have, you put a false expectation on someone that you knew would probably let you down, and then you got hurt because you put the ball in their hands, and the question you have to be asking is, why did you willingly give, give, give the, ball. the ball? That's right. And if it's because you have a fear of being convenience or a fear of being alone or mm -hmm. you just wanted some connectivity, what was the fear that motivated that? What was the action that you took? Have you let that relationship get to a place where it's never going to be fruitful for you? That's ownership you have to take. And that might mean that you either need to reframe and put in boundaries to your relationship, which is very hard to do and is most likely not going to get you what you want. And many people will try and fix what is broken. If it brings you no benefit and if it's just a casual thing that clearly has let you down multiple times in the past... Yeah then get the fuck rid of them. Yeah. Yeah, seriously, though. Because yeah. you're permitting them to make you I unhappy with... by attracting and putting your shit on them. I think that's just... I think I... Well, this is what I blame. I blame the convenience factor because to me it's like I'd rather try with someone I know versus put the energy into, like, trying to meet a new person. That's that's my reasoning. But how behind much energy going. are you expending on all these men? Oh God! I cool. mean, it's a lot. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so like, that's the energy, like the emotional energy you're using, and the will that you're using, and the time that you're using, and the mindset that you're using. All of that, if you gathered all of that up, you'd probably be able to go and find one good dude. I know. <laughs> or you'd be able to gather yourself and actually determine, like not to be trite, one good dude. You'd be able to gather your time and think consciously on like, this hurts me, this hurts me, this is the type of person that hurts me. Like people are, mm -hmm. ne are normally archetypes. Like you can tell what you like and dislike about people. I like curly haired brunettes exclusively. So, like, because of that, I know I am more likely to fall for a curly-haired brunette. And so if I meet one of them, I actually take more notice of them because I have a penchant for falling for them. I have a type. It's overly educated. So, like, that dictates where I think about dating. I don't think about dating at a bar because I don't date people that go to bars that often anymore. If I'm at a conference 
and it's not a professional setting and my professional power doesn't play into it, I will try and form a bond with someone there. And it's like... Like if you just go as an attendee? Yeah. Not not for work? Yeah. Well, even mm. if it is for work, if you're just an attendee, like I don't want to have any influence or power or anything over anybody for the most part because like that's a weird relationship a dynamic. Thing. Yeah. Uh, which we can... Like I'll leave to the side and the world can talk about it because... Uh, all my life of romantic comedy has said that dating at work is okay, and apparently it's not. You name me a rom-com that doesn't have a woman dating a boss. Ugh. So many of them. So many of them. I'm sorry we're socialized so wrong when it comes to love and alcohol and consent, and I am guilty of all of it and have been a piece of shit in my life, and I think everyone has men and women. We both know both men and women that have crossed lines. Yeah. And it's like, it's super uncomfortable. It is their fault. However, you have to look at how you can make that better and how you adjust what you do. But if you don't ever adjust any of it, then you are continuously guilty of the exact same shit. Here's something I want to ask. Self-improvement. Okay. <laughs> I roll. Okay. <clears throat> this is something I've been thinking about lately. Men coming forward and being like, I was shitty. I did these shitty things. Yeah. I need to improve. Do you think guys are less likely to like read a thousand self-help books like women do? Like, you know how women are men always. Read, uh, go look at the fucking numbers. There's countless of self-help books for men. Um, do you think that they're reading them though? Do you think men put the same work who in? Makes, who makes books that no one reads? Right, but, like, do you think men put the same work in for, like, improving themselves as women do? I think that's a ridiculous question that comes from a background of you valuing women more than men. I, no, I'm just legit. No, I, I'm I, legit. Legitimately, every time someone says something like that, that to me, it's like, oh, yeah, you I know think you men do. don't. No, you think I know men you as do. a culture, you want to generalize all of them to the point that none of them work on themselves? There's an entire market of men's self-help, of men's mental health. We have a, a culture that society, like that socializes men to never talk about that shit, so we don't talk about mm. it. But I guarantee you, you go on your list of every guy you know and you ask them if they've ever looked dating advice up at 2 in the fucking morning. Yes, they have. Everyone wants this to This is why better. I'm asking, though, because I don't know. But you, I don't know if guys, I, you I'm told. You don't know. Because of they do. Because I I don't see it in the same ways that I see women talking about it with each other, reading books, saying that they're reading books. So there's like a shame thing there almost. Yeah, there's of course like. a shame thing. But like when you ask that question, mm -hmm. like have you like you can look. It's not hard. There are self-help books. They mm -hmm. sell quite well. Obviously someone buys them. There are a number of men's communities. I'm not saying they're right or they're wrong. But mm -hmm. like men's rights, men's whatever – there's good and bad in every single online community, but like it's really not that hard to look out the window and go, yeah, they exist. Like it's it's self-serving to not. Right. Like to ask that question, mm -hmm. like I would never ask, like, do you think women are improving themselves enough? That's nah. a ridiculous well, question. Well, I'm sorry if I did you. I know I was just literally wondering because it does feel like yeah, but there's that's a more narrative. of a culture around women getting help versus men. That's a narrative though. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you Asking that question is good because it opens the dialogue. However, it is incredibly one-sided to only look at your yard. Like, it's, like, one of the most enjoyable things I do on the internet is I follow um, dating strategy er subreddits for both men and women. And I follow the toxic ones because it's really fun to watch two communities hate each other in the exact same ways and denigrate each other in the exact same ways and not be self-aware of it. Like women on women's... Female dating strategy on uh -huh. Reddit uh -huh. is as toxic as said it, which is the seduction subreddit. It's as toxic. It's as... What's, what's said it? Seduction Reddit. Huh. It's like PUA. Uh, from like the 90s. Is it for guys or, or women? Well, it's most like anyone. PUA is mostly men. There are female PUAs, but like where mm. you look at dating strategy for women would probably be like FDS on Reddit or something like that. Um, and like they become hive minds and echo chambers. Yeah. And you see these two communities that are so similar um, hating each other for the exact same shit. And all it takes is following two subreddits to go, oh, to we're all the it. same. Yeah. Like, right. so to me, it's like, if you ask questions like that, it's like, that's a Google search away for an answer. 
like you can very easily see that the like the world is broken men and women are terrible um we are all trying to get better we have completely different areas we need to get better in mm -hmm. obviously but like it's really not hard to be like yeah that's a that's a thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like yeah it does annoy me and i'm sorry i got a little heated there but it's yeah. like at the end of the day I, i've heard that question asked before and it's like it's really not hard mm -hmm. to to like go and look like i wanted to know what like women were doing right like that's why i follow fds that's why i follow like female subreddits on reddit specifically because mm -hmm. it's easy for me that's why i follow women of influence on twitter it's like i can't just be in my own bubble anymore because being in my own bubble creates an echo chamber and validates myself and like if i don't follow conservatives and people of color and like if i don't have diversity of idea from all angles that i can get then i'm not looking at the world i'm looking mm -hmm. at my world and when you look at your world and only your world you ask questions like are those people doing enough or do they even care but you also start to build resentment right it's oh like, yeah do men even try like it's really I'm easy. asking the reason I asked the question is out of my personal experience that guys have actually admitted to me no I have not done the self work. I've had that admission made to me. Yeah. Whereas like I'm I I feel like I make it a daily effort to do Absolutely. work on myself. But do you think those men don't or do you think they just don't look at it that way? I don't know. Like, I think everybody has an instinct to be better. I would hope they listen to it. But I think everyone, as long as they are, are like, conscious, want to be better, whether they take the action or not. But, like, mm -hmm. there's little actions that I think everyone takes that they don't necessarily recognize is trying to be better. And mm -hmm. so, like, when you ask them, do you have anything to be better? I don't think they know how to conceive of it and say it. And, yeah, there is a huge culture of shame around men improving themselves yeah, um, and that's kind of what I'm getting at. It's a shame that that exists. But there oh, is with women. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I, I know that I have that stigma on my, like, the desperate stigma because I do talk about... I don't necessarily know if it's a d d desperate it is. stigma. It is. It's, it's something people make fun of a lot. So Well, I don't necessarily know if you're desperate, but, like, I think it's obvious that you you lack connection. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, like, when you frame it as desperate, you're even, like, there. You're putting yourself down. Yeah. Which, like, you do not fucking deserve. Yeah. Like, at all. So, like, Sarah, you're not desperate. You just really want to find someone you can spend your time with. That's a healthy Talking about statement. it, though. Talking about dating. Talking about the challenges of dating. Talking about wanting to date. Generally speaking, I would say mostly... Men, in my personal experience, let me rephrase so I don't <laughs> cause a big thing, um, have seen that as trying too hard. And and I'm told, you have to not want it for it to come to you. Which is yeah. I, is something that I don't agree with. For but I will say that I don't get that from school. females. Yeah. I get that from my male friends. Look, don't go to the audience that you want to serve for answers go to them for research yeah like i don't think that a man will tell you anything fruitful in dating because i think you know what they think you need to look at what it actually means to you like don't let anyone define your narrative right like if you want to go and make yourself better think about what you're uncomfortable with think about where things have gone wrong actually like look into it mm -hmm. and like write it the fuck down open a spreadsheet and write down some of your fears and write some of the like the things that you hold in inside. Like, you can probably give me a list of ten dudes that really made you hate guys. <laughs> More than ten. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. But like, you carry that. Yeah. Okay. It shapes. But also, but I will say this: it's it wouldn't just be. I think. Oh, what just happened? Okay, we're all right. Mm, we're good. We're good. I just had a moment to forget there. Um, it's not just the men that reject me. Yeah. It's the cheaters I've caught on social media. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, uh, hmm. How can I say this without being specific? People in male dominant industries, uh, diminishing the opinions of women in those industries. Yeah. And then saying that hey, you just have to work hard like the guys where they don't see the obvious barrier to entry. Yeah. No, people don't 
uh, people have no awareness of their own privilege. But like, yeah, that's going to a person with no water asking them for a drink. Like they don't know where water is. They're yeah. an idiot. They're yeah. unaware. Yeah. So like, you are aware. Yeah. Only concern yourself with the actions you can take. Yeah. For you and for others. There's nothing wrong with with helping others in this, but like, put yourself first for a little while. And yeah. like, actually do the work. No yeah. one really likes doing work on themselves. They like reading and they like learning, but when it comes to enacting and like cogn like reframing your thought and writing it down and like I have knee-jerk reactions sometimes like I have a fear of being alone so like I get a little needy I am aware of this Do I you? yes not with you with certain yeah <laughs> okay look you ha everybody has relationships they lean on so like yeah. I'll lean on a friendship or a relationship and it's like why am I doing it because it's more important to me to deconstruct why I'm doing it and, like, when I see myself do it again, like, if you get mad at a guy, you could be like, this, this, and this. That's why I'm doing that. Like, if I remove those reactions and I think about this as a new interaction, guarded, but a new interaction, mm -hmm. can I put those bias, like, those biases aside? Mm -hmm. And can I work on just this interaction? Right? You don't need to, like learn from your past but don't let it dictate what you're doing right now other than make good decisions but right. like if you don't look at yourself as the actor then you justify your behavior like i drank because of so and so pissed me off or i like or yeah. because it was a bad night like no i drank because i picked up a bottle yeah, right yeah, whatever yeah, the yeah, reason yeah. was i got mad at that person because they were being a dick were they being a dick I got upset at you because you asked a question that I don't like. Should I have just shut the fuck up and listened to what you were saying? No, because even right now, I could admit that was the wrong reaction. Mm -hmm. I should have let you finish the fucking sentence, and I should have addressed it straight up. I got defensive, which is a shitty thing that I do. But I can look at yeah, yeah. like that, yeah, like partially because of my program, partially because of, of like faith that I've worked on. Mm -hmm. But like I can look even now at five minutes ago and say, I was wrong, Sarah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, right? and I think that that's when you feel personally attacked or like, or if you feel like that you take something personally, it can be so easy to go to the, like the but why? Yeah. And, but why did I do it? Like if we deconstruct even that interaction, mm -hmm. okay, I am a guy that does work on himself and yeah. I've helped countless guys that I know with articles or with advice or with listening. Yeah. And I've also helped women, but like I've helped both. So like, yeah, I do take it personally, but that's because I'm a guy that consciously works. Exactly. On so like, but then I'm invalidating your perspective on it. And I'm doing that because of, I don't like that question because I have seen guys. Because drive. you're not that, the person that I'm talking about. Yes. But like, I, I am so close to them as yes. to not properly remove myself from the equation. Right. I think what I was getting at there was like, if guys are working on themselves, they're not, I don't know. The men in my yeah. life that I've well, had negative experiences with, I have not seen the personal growth. What's similar with them? What do you, similar with all the guys? Yeah, why do you chase them? I'm not even just talking about romantic. I'm talking about mm, men in general. Like, yeah, I'm talking why about are you friends with those men, men in general. Why am I friends with those men? I mean, I don't, it, it's never, it doesn't have to be an emotional friendship. Yeah. It can just be someone I'm friends with based on social groups. And so or like, like, do you feel... Like, that's a very big question, right? Why what am do I you friends do with to them? Make, no, what do you do to make yourself better, right? If I ask someone that, odds are they're probably not going to tell me because I don't have enough credibility in their life for them to open up like that. And if it's a guy, okay, where we are socialized to not talk about that, to not show emotion, like, you go and look on dating subreddits and every one of them for men will usually say, if you have a feeling, don't and express yeah, it. no, exactly. Which is, uh, which I don't think is the right way at all. Like, I, I don't like that about the socialization of men. I think it causes a lot of issues and it means mm. outbursts and anger outbursts um, that are scary. There's another component in that. The anger? No, there's another component in that relationship. It's mm. not just that men are socialized to not talk about it. It's also that we're also socialized, men and women, to not engage it. Yeah. Because men don't talk about emotions. Yeah. 
So like when you open up about emotions, you are dealing with um, a negative repercussion from men and yeah. potentially one from the woman. Mm -hmm. So it's like it is safer to not say anything. And also to yes. work on yourself is to admit flaws. And if I kind of know you, I'm definitely not going to answer that fucking question. Because I'm not here to admit flaws to you with that perspective. To admit flaws, you got to know somebody. You, to, to admit flaws, like in a, like if, if we were talking and I was to go, Finley, this is a flaw of mine, or am I admitting your flaws? No, what do you if, mean by if, that? If you ask someone you, you kind of know. Like if you, kind put, of... if you put friendships in a one to ten order, uh -huh. right? You're seven to tens, yeah, they're going to answer you. Uh -huh. Okay? Well, those, those are the top tier people that you can you're talk with. You're four to your sevens? Uh-huh. They're not going to say it. We're not going to answer it. that. No one's going to answer that. Most people would not answer that unless yeah. they are socialized to like whether if they're like liberal or left leaning or like have worked on themselves a lot, like a lot, a lot. Um, if they found that honesty has been beneficial to them. But like for the most part, we are socialized men specifically to not to talk not, about that to stuff. Not do that, yeah. Like mm -hmm. I have literally seen a correlation between uh, opened up emotionally and broken up. So like... Um, Right. Yeah, I'm probably not going to share with you if I'm dating you because statistically speaking, and I work gonna... on this, I actually do share, but like only a few years ago, like mm -hmm. with just that correlation, mm -hmm. it's like men are trained to not talk about our emotions. And I right. think it's partially because like if you socialize men to never bring up their emotions, we bring them up at cataclysmic times. Yeah. And so it's yes. like, oh, yeah, that correlation of, oh, I, like, like, like I said, dig into things. Oh, I talked about my emotions and we broke up. It's like, mm, did you or did you talk about your emotions because you were going to break up? And so you're drawing a false conclusion and yeah. like look into like, yeah, I bottled it up for months. I hid it for months and then I let it come out here. And oh, yeah, there was a big blowout. Right. Where like the first time someone does something that annoys you. You should talk about like, it. Like, hey, could you do me a favor? Like, one of the people I hang out with, um, she is phenomenal at, like, just casually being like, hey, could you not do that again? And I'm like, cool. And, like, we continue on. And I don't do it again. Right. And, like, the, like, sh like, I will bottle that shit up until, like, the 30th time. And then I just want to rip someone's fucking If something head bugs off. you about the person? Anyone. About anyone. You, you don't say it right away. No. Right. Because... I just honestly uh, have trained myself to not care. That could be, that's a big thing. Oh, yeah. It's a huge thing. Yeah. And also like I have gotten to a point where I try and rise above it now. So it's a, it's a, a similar outcome, different perspective. And because I'm just trying to rise above it and not judge people for their actions, it's easier for me to do. Yeah. Like before it was a negative reaction. Now it is a positive. Like I understand why I do it. And I like, I consciously think about things. Mm -hmm. because like if you're not consciously thinking about things that you want in your life they're never gonna happen mm -hmm. like i automate my savings accounts mm -hmm. cheaply mm -hmm. like 10 bucks a week a bi week just into a savings account i never look at it i did one thing it runs automatically i check it on occasion i did the first steps to get it going to make it routine and now it's just part of my life routinely i will do things like self inventories or i will look at conversations with people or i will go back and look at relationships that i was in and how did i let them go wrong what did i not communicate that would have been beneficial to communicate because someone can do me um like something wrong like they can they can go against me they can do something i didn't want but like if i never really communicated my want i have no right to really be mad yeah, right. common decency, but, like, common decency is, like, this bullshit social thing we all believe in. People do what they want to do, which makes them happy, and in the context of their situation, it could be completely fine. Yeah. So, like, again, you're not responsible for them. You're responsible for what you communicate and what you allow to happen to you and what you don't push back upon. And I think we socialize men to do it at a blow-up, and I think we socialize women to kind of compartmentalize it. And mm -hmm. I think we are just doing a disservice to everyone, but also we're just monkeys mm -hmm. that evolved and made a world with cars. Yeah. I just, I'm not, it's, it's strange because I'm friends with so many, what I would call passive people. Yeah. People who don't do anything about issues. There's this issue, but conflict avoiders, people who avoid conflict. Yeah. Most and people conflict. I think 
what's frustrating to me sometimes is I will try to better a situation, but it is seen as me creating conflict because it's a tough conversation to have or something. Are or... you doing it on your own behalf or others' behalf? <sighs> Both, maybe? Okay, don't do the other one anymore. The, if it doesn't other pertain to you... And uh, you're a better man. Well, see, that's that's a tricky one. Because I'm thinking of a recent situation of which um, I would say that it does impact me and it impacts others. And others just didn't want to speak up about it. So I chose to speak up about okay, it. That's great. But did um, you do it for others or for yourself? Totally. I both mean, are fine. That's, that's just a, it, both. I would say I would say both. Yeah. I would but say both. When you have things that are wrong in your life, it's like I'm a grief junkie. I think most people are. Like it's really Ooh, what's easy. a grief junkie? Grief junkies are anyone that like just looks for controversy or a thing to feel valid about or outraged about. Um, like if you tweet a whole bunch of angry shit, like you might be valid in doing it. Mm. Fine. You also might be distracting yourself with a social issue so that you don't have to deal with the shit in your own life. Oh, I mean, yeah, absolutely. And it's super easy to do that because we have a world that is constructed to keep us busy with negativity. And so it's really easy to go down that road. Like, it's very hard to open a spreadsheet and document your personality. No one really wants to fucking do that shit. I, I kind of want to now. <laughs> do it. I'll send, I, I'll send you a template. I find that interesting because, I mean, you're no stranger to this. Like, this is an issue I have is people's perception, I feel, is so off about me. And it's something that I really struggle with in terms yep. of... I just want someone to get it and understand why yep. I do the things I do. So the book by Neil Strauss called Truth. Heard of this, yeah. Yep. Neil's kind of a piece of shit in a lot of ways. Um, but I would say that Truth is a pretty decent book to read. Um, that being said, like if you feel like you actually have a love addiction, treat it like any addiction. Yeah. Right? Like You don't need to talk at meetings, but... Go to a couple. I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up. I'm seriously going to look well, it up. Anything, any mm -hmm. addiction. Like this thing, AA is an NA and like any of those programs. Like mm -hmm. nobody cares if you're from the other club. Mm -hmm. Like I've been it's in welcoming. rooms, yeah. where someone is like, I'm such and such, or I'm two or three things. I got two or three problems. I'm not saying go in and be like, I'm a love addict, but mm -hmm. go in and be like, yeah, I'm an I'm an addict. Mm -hmm. Like, guess what? Your 12 steps, or if you're doing a 12-step program or if you're doing another program, like, all of it's still going to work because it's mostly just what are the things that make me do the negative things and then I spin out of control, mm -hmm. right? And if you can list those and get some help with it, and I'm not saying, like, a lot of programs do have, like, an undertone of Jesus, which I don't super love. Me neither. Um, however, most of it is framed in, like, just like a system that works for you mm -hmm. so like i when anybody says like god and stuff like it's also just faith and practice mm -hmm. like go read like the daily ref reflections of of a 12-step group go mm -hmm. read um like any book on addiction um it's all the same shit yeah. like it's like sales systems like if you read one sales book it's the same book as the 20 you got on your shelf it just has slightly different points it works for the exact same shit it's the same reason why Ciprolex works for depression and anxiety. It just, some stuff just works for a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Right? So, like, go take a 12-step. Go take, a, like, any program. Go on an addiction subreddit. Go find a love addiction subreddit. They probably exist. Like, go and find the community of people. You, like, that is a more healthy use of your energy than engaging in negative relationships. Yeah. No, 100%. But also, too, I think I think it's also, like, I mean... I don't, I don't have the fucking answers. I don't know. But I think for me, with the love addiction stuff, it's expectation management. And if I do start to feel crush feelings towards someone, I have to fucking yeah. not plan a wedding. Like, <laughs> Okay, so that's, that's a clear... <laughs> you know over, what I mean? Like, that's, like, a, that's, a, that's an indulgence and a fantasy that you go into. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? Yeah. Um, however, like, when do you feel those emotions? Like, if you go through your late messages or your messages that you regret later, is there any correlation? Hard day at work, feel like you're not valid, something didn't go your way. Feel like you're not valid. Okay. Oh, but that's root, That's the root of love addiction, though. Absolutely. However, like, you know that going to these fuckboys, we're, we're calling them what they are. Fuckboys who don't fuck. Yeah. Fuckboys. That's what 
that's what we are as a people. Uh, I was one, still kind of am one. Um, fuck boys are like they're they're always gonna give you the same thing. I can yeah. go to McDonald's and get a double cheeseburger anywhere I want in the world. It's the same quality product. So is the dude dude in the white tee and like <laughs> nice car. I know who I am. Okay, all of them are the same. Yeah. Okay. People fall into archetypes. Yeah. People fall into very similar things. You can tell someone you are interested in or someone that you feel will give you petty validation a mile away. Do you seek those people because it's quick, cheap, easy validation? Is it that if you go into trying to find a real relationship, are you going to be afraid? All of those are looming, terrifying things that can keep you doing what you are doing. Like, I really didn't want to admit I was an addict. Really right. didn't want to admit that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it took me a lot of mental gymnastics and wasted effort to... I'd been it. Yeah, mm -hmm. to avoid it and then admit it. Only mm -hmm. to admit it and have everything be better. Mm -hmm. It's like if you have a problem, if you know you have a problem, stop engaging and stop doing what the problem makes you do and start critically dissecting it. It's going to feel like shit. Oh, yeah. But like so does running. Yeah, so does dieting. And like we've all watched BoJack Horseman, like it gets a little easier every day you do it. Yeah. But you've got to do it. Yeah. Writing an inventory, if you're in recovery, writing a diary of the things that you fucked up, thinking about making amends, thinking about the bad decisions that you made, that's not fun. It's really, 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 really painful. Ooh, yeah. But if you can find out that the reason you were a creep at a party is because you have emotional attachment issues. Right. And you like were sad and drunk and you lashed out and were a little bit too much. Like y you've just dissected why you did it. So you can get to the root of it and avoid it. So when you say the spreadsheet thing, does it look like something like I did this shitty thing. So here's the shitty thing. So if we if, here's what don't think about it as shitty things first. Okay. I, I need you or to not frame your bad yourself. thing, bad for you thing. The things that you did are, if you look at like from like a 12 step program, like a true 12 yeah. step based on like Duck Bob's work, which is AA, but like I'm not saying AA, but like just yeah. any 12 step program, right. they're generally the same. So you're looking at like an inventory where you generally do them in order. Mm -hmm. um, I okay. don't know the order off the top of my head, but it's usually, I think it's fears first and then harm. And then, no, it's, it's, Fears, resentments, harms, and sexual. And sexual is basically like the times you transgressed in a relationship or in that ballpark, right? So like if you, so it's not the shitty thing. So like you list the things you resent. So like we'll just talk about resentment, okay? Uh -huh. You list all the things, people, places, and things that you resent, uh -huh. okay? Specifics? Specifics, no, you're just naming them, okay. right? So like if you got a beef with the HRP, you got a beef with St. Mary's, you got a beef with Dalhousie, you got a beef with Mary, you got a... Dis you got to beef with John. Like, I don't care who these people are, but you write them down and uh -huh. you, you do them in columns. So this okay. is not left to right. Okay. Okay. So you will write all the people and places and things that you resent. Okay. You will then dive into like, usually I think it's an assessment of like what you were wrong on and what parts of you were harmed and why you resent them. So like you might have been overly like, and it's completely in the context of you, not what they did. Okay. okay? So like I can tell you that there are, are things on inventories I have done that I think are the person being wrong. Okay. Um, it was, it was, I resent them for it. So like someone constantly asking for my advice. Mm -hmm. Okay. I might choose to resent that. Mm -hmm. I also might've been incredibly self-seeking and deluded mm -hmm. in thinking that they were asking for something that they weren't. I also could have tied my emotional self-worth into helping other people. Ding I'm not, but mm -hmm. I'm not saying this is true of you or I, mm -hmm. but I am saying that these are the things that you start to examine. And at the end of it, because you're framing it all in the case of you, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, yeah, they were, they did whatever, but oh. I was being self-seeking and constantly reaching out and overvaluing and projecting because of, and then you, like after resentments, I think does come fears. And it's like, Fears are way easier to write when you understand your resentments because it's like I resent like I, I acted out here, here, and here, like acting out, just doing the wrong thing. OK, here, here and here, like on these three points, like maybe I gave too much advice or I was pissed off at someone or I was a dickhead at a party or I like flirted a bit too like piece of shitty like people do that. Mm -hmm. um, and like you go, OK, 
So like, why did I do it? What was the fear that motivated that? What fear motivated the resentment? Motivated the, the action that the action. caused the resentment. Or okay. what expect, like what part of you caused that interaction? How are you guilty? Because right. you're the problem. Like yeah. I'm not saying you're actually the problem, but in the context of most recovery programs, you're the problem. Because you are the actor in the play. Yes. And you took the actions you took, permitted, set up situations, da da da, da. That's doing the things that are hurting you. Yes. So yeah. like we only want to analyze the things that you do That's right. and your interactions. Because we can only, we can only, we can't control other people. No. Like that, that, that is something that has been crazy for me to learn, which is just like my, my grandma's advice that she used to give, which is like, you cannot rely on anyone but yourself. Yeah. Literally even your best friend. Like you cannot. No. You can trust friends on a certain level for sure. Yeah. But you cannot rely on anyone else. No. Because no. everyone has the ability to like fucking murder you. Everyone can <laughs> flake. Everyone can let you down. Yeah. But in the next breath, it's like you can also let someone That's down. That's right. That. So like if you are truly and wholly only focused on your actions and how you impact things, like you get to determine why you do those things and you get to do the work of figuring out how you correct that shit like you don't intellectualize it a whole bunch and like dig super deep but like you'll notice patterns you'll notice trends you'll notice things that you actually feel bad for and that you should probably say you're sorry for like there's most programs have some form of making amends um not every yeah, one of them like not the, every one of them right but like it's generally speaking like it depends on the program but there's different ways to go about it um it's like do you say sorry do you not say sorry oh that's a big one Sometimes to do greater harm in saying sorry is not worth it. Mm -hmm. So you just don't. But sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah, you do. Um, I Sorry is a complicated subject for me because I think people say sorry for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes you say sorry because you're sorry. Sometimes you say sorry because you feel guilty. Those That's are not the one. same thing. Though they're not the same thing. I know. Yes. And like one of those is, is in fact selfish. Yes. Like if I am just saying sorry to you, like classic, uh, just from someone who drank too much, like the yeah. classic reaction is to apologize the next day. You've had no time to reflect on what you did and you might not even know what you did. You're just giving a cursory I'm sorry because you were a piece of shit. You think you were a piece of shit and you find out you were a piece of shit. And you don't know the specifics. Yeah, but like even if you did know the specifics, like you're probably not going to be capable of a true and meaningful I'm sorry the next day because you've, right. you've not earned that. You've not enacted any change to prevent you from doing those things. Like, yeah, show contrition. Like, feel sorry. But like, it, it's not going to like absolve you to no. say you're sorry. In fact, it's probably going to make the other person frigging furious at you. Um <laughs> Something I've been, th I've been thinking about the apology thing a lot lately because I often feel like when I'm angry at somebody, I want an apology to make me feel better. Yeah. But I often wonder, would it make me feel better? Who cares? Because they still did the damage. But who cares if they are sorry? Damage is done. Like, what does sorry do? Like, if you are not willing to, like, if, if enough time has not passed for them to have taken meaningful thought. That's the story I want. I want the one that comes later. What, do you keep track of them? <laughs> no, dead ass. Do you keep track of them? Like, do I, do I keep track of? Do you expend any mental energy on thinking who fucking owes you and I'm sorry? Not really. Good. It should be completely no, though. Mm -hmm. um, because, again... There's only a few. You're you're setting yourself <laughs> up for disappointment yeah. by putting your expectations on other people. Other people yeah. are just sometimes shitty, dude. Yeah, no, I know. I have been that shitty person, and it's I I owe a lot of people, uh, and I'm sorry, and I will eventually get there when I have appropriately dealt with my own shit because recovery is also selfish. I am not here, like I'm not getting sober. I'm not sober for anyone I hurt because to do that would really mess up what i'm doing absolutely yeah like you, i am yeah. sober because i need to be a better person yes and like in becoming a better person i will hopefully earn an amount of ability to say i'm sorry and have it actually mean, mean something. something so like only concern yourself with your actions i don't give a shit who pissed you off? Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit who treated you wrong. Mm -hmm. None of that is going to improve your life. 
None of that is going to make you better. It might make you feel good. That's a cheap, convenient cock at 10 on a Friday. Yeah. Right? That's that's McDonald's French fries. That's People Magazine. It's stupid filler that might make you feel good, but ultimately does not make you better and in fact might keep you in a negative cycle because you're not concerned with yourself. You're concerned with others. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that literally to you. I'm saying that as a general concept. Everyone is usually not looking at themselves enough. Absolutely. Like, if you don't know your top 10 fears, and mm-hmm. I'm not t- talking spiders, <laughs> um, if you don't know like who you actually resent at yeah. your core, like if you don't know who you resent, you can't get over it. That's right. You will just get mad when someone says their name. It's, I wrote in my phone a while ago a note because I was thinking about this, like the idea of, because I, I think some people call it this, which is like shadow work, which is like looking at the dark shitty sure. aspects of yourself and trying to fix that um some people just never do that no one does most people don't and most people if they do it they only do it as a formality in feeling better about themselves yeah. i did some work on myself like it's yeah. it's why reading an article about fitness makes us feel similar to going out and doing a workout right like it is easy substitution that feels good that's right it is not necessarily a real advancement a real advancement requires deep and thorough examining of your life why you did things how your fears connect to your resentments Mm -hmm. how those connect to the people that you hurt how you're responsible in those things Mm -hmm. and then after you digest all of that, you can begin to look and many like systems will probably use like some metric of faith. I probably pick Buddhism because I'm shitty at religion. Shitty, shitty Buddhist. Yeah. Like I pick Buddhism because it works for me, but like any religion is mostly like, hey, don't be shitty and be a good person and like also work on yourself and like have some amount of moral like yeah. review of yourself. Yeah. Like here's 12, like everything is like, here's 12 rules. <coughs> Or here's yeah. four rules. Mm-hmm. Here's four truths or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, mostly those are just rules for not sucking. Right. Religion's mostly ancient self-help and like rules to govern a society. Like there was a reason why in kosher law you didn't eat pork and shellfish. It's not because God told you to. It could be, and I'm not trying to denigrate anyone's religion. Uh-huh. But it's also like if you look at that world and that time and that place, uh, swine rolled around in their own shit and the Nile was disgusting. Like the riverways were disgusting. So yeah, shellfish had a lot of things in them that could make you sick as did right. fucking. Like there's a lot of, actual intelligence built into religions yeah. to inform a general mass of what they need to be doing. Like most systems are just like find a faith. And the reason you're finding a faith is because it is find a time tested system for running a life yeah. and building a world right. and being successful in it. The Bible does that. Uh, any of the Buddhist books do it. Um, any of the um, the Hindu books do it. Like, Every religious book is mostly at its core, stop being shitty and also obey these rules and these rules kind of make you a better person. Like there's a reason you don't commit adultery, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And like there's a reason you don't covet things that like don't covet thy neighbor's wife isn't just about don't fuck your neighbor's wife Mm -hmm. or don't want to fuck your neighbor's wife. It's also don't want what they have. Don't keep up with the Joneses. Focus on your own shit. Focus on you. And it's like when we don't like I didn't really learn my religion as a kid. I just went to church. Like, okay. you don't take a lot from those allegories, but, like, as an adult, if you can find any belief system or any system of rules that allow you to govern your life, you can just default to the rules. And if you picked one that is generally in line with who you want to be in a, as a person, then it can work for you. I'm a shitty Buddhist. Like, I strive to not project my wants onto other people. I don't get mad when they forget things. I don't get mad when my life isn't important to them. I just accept it for what it is. If they choose to care about me, hey, that's great. Right. I I feel good. But like I do not project my wants onto anyone as much as I can anymore because that is where, like if you have a a negative headspace and if you have something that is pulling you in the wrong direction, if you have a substance issue or an addiction, it's like those are obviously the reasons why you're going to eventually act out and you're going to act out in a way that is similar to that. Like if you take a, like an emotionally deprived person and you get them drunk 
they're going to do two things. They're going to hate everyone else's relationship, and they're going to be slutty. And I don't mean that in a mean way, okay? I just mean they're going to be more available to more people because at that moment, they're feeling pain and they're under the influence of something. Yeah. So they're going to be more willing to say things they shouldn't say, do things they shouldn't say. And at the core of it, it's because they are lonely. Yeah. But like, it's really easy to keep drinking or to keep partying or to keep chatting than it is to admit that you're lonely and to actually say, that's actually not a bad thing. What could I do in my loneliness? Yeah. Or like, how could I make the loneliness something I'm happy with? I am extremely happy with my loneliness when I am lonely. I have people that I love. I have people I enjoy. I have people I hang out with. But like, if I'm home alone on a Thursday, it used to be, or like a Sunday, it used to be like, I, no one cares about me. I have nothing to do. The, like the negative head story that you start telling yourself yeah. is like, no one cares about you. In fact, um, it's just Sunday, bitch. <laughs> Like, yeah. I like gonna, go read a book because that's what you do on Sundays. I was going to ask how, how have you, how has the lockdown been? We're coming out of lockdown, but how were the three months for you specifically? Easy. Did you, you didn't have any issues? I live with my mom, man. Like right. I can literally, like I see a person every day. For those right. that are listening, I'm flipping my mother's basement. So like right. I'm installing floors and cleaning and ripping things out and also decluttering my entire life because after 10 years, there's a lot of shit you don't need anymore. Um, and so like that takes time. But like for the last three months, like uh, sobriety addiction is hard in any yeah. situation that is stressful. Um, I am mostly okay. Yeah. Um, I am very lucky in that I am in a very safe place. Like I, I go to my program um without my program i would have a lot of problems um i do the things that my program tells me i have a faith like i have some abstract faith i will root like part of that faith is also like i have to meditate like i don't really get a choice like you gotta kind of do it because it's the system that you're in so like i meditate i meditate on things i know i'm supposed to meditate on there's a whole thing about that like uh we can talk about meditation sometime like there's a lot of things i do reading like studying um doing inventory work or just keeping a diary like there's a lot of things i do now in my life to fill time that are also to make myself better um and to get to know myself and to get to know the things and the reasons that i fucked up Mm -hmm. um but like three months of that is like who cares like i i was already gonna do this stuff regardless right um if you can be okay now you'll be fine in anything right Right. Like I know that it has been very hard for many people, Mm -hmm. but it's also like you allow it to be. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I wish I had someone or, oh, I miss seeing people. It's it's a fucking pandemic. We all miss seeing people. It's collective. Yeah. What can you do? There's some weird comfort in that. Yeah. What can you do to get around it? Mm -hmm. I run Zoom games. That's right. Uh, I'll do things like this. Um, Zoom calls with friends. Yeah. That held me together. I, th- I feel like when. Yeah. And so it's like if you do those things and you make them part of your life and you look at your time and you say, OK, that's enough. It's like what in your like idle hands are a bad thing. So like not having that. anything to do mm-hmm. is a bad thing. Not yeah. having anything to do will cause you to roll into your addiction. It'll cause you to um, act out. It'll cause you to do unhealthy things. If you start constructing a life that has an hour a week of of reviewing yourself an hour a week of journaling an hour a week of reading and if you spread that out through the week like what happens is you start to consciously think about those set activities and they start to take up more of your time like yeah i might think about my inventory the day before that's an extra 30 minutes it might take i might write for an extra 20 minutes on a sunday i might read a book for an extra 30 or 40 i might read a second book for another 30 when you start building in positive and self like focused activities, you will start to see that you just simply get better. And you will also notice that the energy and the time that you devote to shitty behavior goes away. Goes down. Yes. Because if, if you don't eat a salad, you're going to want fries. That's right. And like you, if you want fries, it is not the time for salad. Okay. You have to be proactive in getting better rather than reactive in getting better. It's why people go to meetings. It's why people do step work. It's why people go to whatever program they go to. It's why they meditate. subscribe or read or meditate. Fill up your days with things that are beneficial for you. For you. Yeah. So that you like eat the salad so you don't want the fries. That's right. Mm-hmm. Right. 
figure mm-hmm. out what your problem is so that you don't act out. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you can do that, I'm not saying that you won't fuck up. Uh, no one is a saint. Everyone's going to fuck up. Everyone's going to relapse, probably, at some point. If you have a really great stretch, like there are people in programs I've met that like 40 years without their addiction, it's like, hey, great, I'm not there yet. All I can do is day by day. One day at a time. One day at a yeah. time is a it's a big thing in, in the AA circles, but like one day at a time is in every recovery program because that's all you can handle. You don't need to fix everything in the first day. You don't have to 100% anything. You can 80, 85% yes. it, get the basics going. Fucking write for 20 minutes in a notepad tonight before you go to bed. Yeah. That is one action that you can do in 20 minutes. Something I really want to start doing is the journaling. Because I, I oh, everyone wants to start it, journaling. Well, it's all up here for me. Yeah. I and but it's that's part of why Take I don't sleep. Minutes. Take the twenty <laughs> minutes. But you like, know? there's also like in therapy, there's a concept of like of anxiety and depression and management that one of my therapists taught me, and it's like, have you done everything you can do right now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. No? yeah. And, and if yes, you have to stop. Yeah. So like, if you are laying in bed with all of your thoughts Mm -hmm. and you didn't write it down yeah there's something you could do write it down and if you write it down it might make it easier to sleep but if you are craving the fries you already have a problem if you react or like proactively write on a sunday or a monday or tuesday if you a couple times a week if, if it's Friday at 3 a.m. and you can't sleep and your thoughts are going, it's like, cool, these are things I will document the next time I document, which is here. And you may not have the issue because you documented a couple of days before, right? When you crave something, it's the worst time to address it, Ugh, right? Yeah. So, like, if you could build in these healthy things and like that's healthy all religion. Routines. Yeah, that's all religion is. It's just yeah. a healthy routine. Yeah. Meditate, pray, read your book. Like routines are really, I, I've realized this even more so over the quarantine, really hard for me to keep up with a routine. I have a thing of vitamins there. I've taken it once because yeah. I'm not used to taking vitamins every day and I forget to take them. Then take one. I just, I just fucking suck at routine. Did, I did just you take one fucking today? suck at no, routine. Did you take one today? No. Okay. So you're literally discussing the thing yeah. that you want to do as a habit and you're discussing yeah. it. Yeah. No, I know. The re- no, go take one. But I can't take one on an empty stomach. You gotta eat a meal. Do you actually? Yeah, because the because there's like five vitamins and they're like it'll upset your stomach if you don't eat. Does it actually though? Have you yes. tried it? I haven't tried it, but I'm not gonna go against what's medically recommended. Okay, but is is action? <laughs> My stomach is bad enough. Okay. I don't want to risk an upset stomach. Because I don't want to do it 100. percent I won't do it 85. That's what I heard. Yeah. No. And I, there's I, nothing I wrong with that. Live your life however you want, but. Odds are, okay, here, you'll be fine. Here's another question. You just when, drink a black coffee. When does... I've never been medicated for anything. Yeah. I've never been in regular therapy. Black what I can therapy. say is that there are days that I feel it is beyond my control. The exact inability to get out of bed. Like, like chemically, biologically, yeah. it's not a... I, like, I know what I have to do. Yeah. When, at what point does it become like, I need to be put on? Who, um, okay, so I've medication. had this discussion a few times. Um, I, d- I don't think it's a, a matter of when do I need it. Um, medication is cheap, okay? It's available. Um, and it allows you to take every bit of energy that you use to fight your problem and get it back. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like if sometimes it, I feel like there's yeah. way more than just my. If you live in an economy of energy, like your physical energy and ability to do things. Yes. Okay. And you are finding you do not have enough to spend. You need to look at ways to get more. And if that is a pill mm-hmm. for a few months, forever, I have been medicated for years. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have had so many people, I don't want to take meds. I don't want it to change who I am. I don't mm-hmm. want to. That's you, a concern. Who, yeah, cool. Um, Just go try it. There's nothing to stop you. It is like 30 bucks. I know that's a lot of money for some people, but it's 30 bucks that gives you endless amounts back. 
Um, medication, most mental medication will kick in inside a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, you can see how it affects you if you (coughs) choose to go off it. Um, you're mostly fine. Um, it's pretty rapid to go off. You might have a couple of side effects, but whatever. Um, try it. Yeah. Because if you are facing any day (coughs) where you can't get out of bed, go take the pill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and pills are just like everything else. It is about routine. Yeah. If you take a medication, you take it every day because being well is a part of your every day. Right. And yeah, you, don't get me wrong. You can go out and you can change your diet and you can run and you can exercise and it has a lot of positive mental benefits. Yeah. Totally does. However, if you're in a downward spiral or having a bad week, you're not going to go run. You're not going to eat okay. You're not going to look after yourself the pill might actually change that. Might, might get you, because again, going back to the podcast I was listening to right before I came here, it was talking about how like when someone is mentally ill or not well, yeah. they often think, I gotta do, I gotta be medicated or go to therapy or go to therapy and not be medicated. And it's like so many times it's actually the medication that will get you to therapy. So talk therapy is beneficial. I've done it. I do it. Um, years after I was medicated. Right. Right. Um, medication is something you can get inside a doctor's appointment and you can start taking and you can start seeing what it does to you. And even if it is placebo, the simple fact that you have addressed the concern and have started to work on yourself can be a positive change. Was it, would they give you placebo? No, but I mean, okay. like, there is like, <laughs> your, your pills don't kick in for a couple of weeks. Right. Okay? So, but just the act of taking the act it. of taking it. The fact ah. that you've acknowledged it. One of the most freeing calls of my life was when I called the doctor the first time and said I needed depression meds. Mm. Right. The first time I did that. And right. that was fucking huge. And I have very rarely gone off my medication since then. Right. Um, it has been nothing but positive. Right. Am I a little bit different? Yeah, but you're bad. Ba- but it's you're better. This brand sells, <laughs> right? Right, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily know who I would be without medication, but I do know I would be endlessly more unhappy. Right, that's right. Do mm-hmm. I care if I am the same person if I am functional? Right, and if I am who I could be, like mm-hmm. it gives like you don't have to be on it forever, but it will give you an even footing. It will give you some reliability. It will give you some stability, and sometimes that gets you through just on just the pill. Right. That can be enough. I, I finished my degree because of medication, right? right? I stopped dropping out. I stopped having anxiety issues. I, if I go off my medication, depending on the time and what's going on, I can have panic attacks. I don't have panic attacks if I take my medication. Panic attacks, uh, for those that have had them or have not had them, are exhausting. Yeah, they're awful. If I have one panic attack at 2 p.m., I'm done. Your day is done. Yeah, it's done. There's no recovery. Right. Um, I'm exhausted. I used all my chemicals in my body to amp myself up, and it all went wrong, and I didn't solve. Like, you can can stop anxiety attacks. Okay, there's mental training you can do. Mm Mm-hmm. And through therapy, you can get there and you do reframe your thought and the way that you act and the way that you view and the way that you do things. However, that's not going to be learned in a fucking day by an article. And (laughs) don't let the fact that you can do that stop you from going and getting a chemical, which will reduce your need to practice those skills. Now, I will admit, having been on medication for a while, I am much worse when I have a bad day because I am no longer used to bad days, okay? My bad days now are quite bad. They are few and far between, but why do I want to be good at bad days? Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's a stupid hang up. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, Mm -hmm. my life is, when I'm bad, it's, it's way worse. However, I might have a bad day once a month now instead of once a week. Right. So do I give a shit that it's worse than those four? Those four killed me i'll take one because that one might not even happen right right so if you start to dig into this if you start to like doing the actions to get you to 80 percent, it is so much easier to be at 80 working to 100 than it is to be at zero wanting to be at 100 
Hmm. Right. And it's like, we can dive into minutia and should I learn the CBT and should I go to therapy? Should I take pills? Take any fucking action because Try any it. action is better than the rest of us taking no action. So true. Um, and that's why I'm a shitty Buddhist. Because it's the minimal action that I can take. <laughs> to be okay. What's like the main mantra for Buddhism? Like what's Equanimity. The... Happiness in all things. Happiness in yeah, all things. To, to be free of suffering. And suffering is generally from want, and want is very much putting your expectations into the universe and expecting them to be fulfilled. I'm not owed anything. I do not deserve anything. I can work in the moment to get what I want, and I can work towards things, and I can build towards things, but I don't deserve any of them. They could not happen. I have to be happy with whatever the outcome is as long as I do what I can do, and I try to live correctly in the moment and support people and be a good person and, and not cause suffering. Mm -hmm. Um Hey, that's great. Yeah. I can't fix every problem. I'm not responsible for that. I'm not responsible for anything other than my own actions. And I work very hard to be good now and to do good for people and to help people and to not be a general piece of shit. Um, helping people would be a huge thing, I think. Yeah, but don't get, like, helping people feels good. I, uh, make sure you gotta keep that in check yeah 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 why do people share donations on so like social media yeah at this point i would say be selfish yeah but like in yeah. being selfish only in time you're not special you're not amazing you need to really review yourself everyone needs to really review themselves because we live in a world where we're the best thing ever sometimes and you really need to get a scope and a scale of who you are what you do that's wrong what the bad behaviors you have are, what puts people off, what engages people, what makes you destructive, what are the bad actions that you take? Because if you can assess those and start to see the roots of them, mm -hmm. you can get better. So mm -hmm. like example of, of stuff out of like Buddhism specifically, like when you meditate, you can meditate on a lot of things. People generally will view meditation as like an absence of thought, which is totally fine. You can, however, meditate on things. Okay, you can meditate on emotion, on interaction. Um, I frequently will do, um, stuff like, um, emotional reviews. So, huh. um, it's not the right term for it, but it's easier to digest if I say it that way. Um, if you feel like the, the, like take any strong emotion, but let's use guilt. Okay. You know what guilt feels like. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't spend a lot of time being in that feeling, right? You, no one spends a lot of time thinking like when you're guilty, you feel guilty because you did a thing. It's not a lot of, like, introspection at that moment, right? I will purposely make myself feel a certain way, and then I will just sit with that. Purposely make yourself feel a certain way? Like, when like you... I will just make myself feel guilty. Like, think of I'll something? I'll think about things that I did. I'll think okay. about how I feel when I'm guilty. I'll think about the feeling of guilt. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just sit there. Yeah. Because um, you ever jump in a cold lake? Yes. Yeah, it's really jarring. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. So here's the thing. If I routinely wade into the cold water, when someone splashes me with it, I can actually take it and be objective. Mm -hmm. So if you take some time and whatever emotion is a hot button one for you, if it's anger. a trigger, yeah, mm -hmm. if anger triggers your anxiety, mm -hmm. okay, if you think about anger mm -hmm. and you focus on that anger, but you don't engage it, you just experience it. Yeah. When you have anger come up because you're used to thinking about anger logically and to interacting and thinking about that anger and knowing what it feels like you see it coming you can deal with it better and yes. you lash out less right it's kind of so, like train it's like you're like training it's kind of like you're training yourself to like yes fight like, against you're it exactly in a way. doing that yeah, yeah, yeah you're exactly doing that you're finding out what is a negative emotion for you and you're calling upon it and you're experiencing it and you're thinking about it there's nothing wrong with any emotion but if you spend time in that negative emotion and you learn that it's really not that bad when it hits you you can actually go oh wait a minute i'm angry is it valid mm, kind of why am i angry so like the anger's still going yeah. on yeah you've just gotten to a place where you can be like but actually, right. uh, these things. Yes. And you can be like, okay, so how does that interact with the anger? And you can de-escalate, uh -huh. uh -huh. right? Because you've taken the time to get used to the cold water when someone splashes you with it, ain't no thing. What are your thoughts on keeping track, like almost developing some sort of like reward system for yourself? In other words, 
days of, say you're really angry and normally you would express that anger through being petty about something or saying petty comments, but you, you're not petty that day. And you're like, days without being petty. <laughs> One, two. Mm-hmm. And you keep... Tr- and Whatever system you need. Um, to motivate. If, if it makes you less petty, and uh-huh. if you start to view petty as the enemy, mm-hmm. and you start to look at how you handle emotions, mm-hmm. do that. Right. But like, don't make it a simple, like, I wasn't petty today. Right. Like, that's, that's taking joy in not enacting with any emotion. You need to objectively objectively see when you want to be petty and go, that's the wrong thing. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. hurtful. Yeah. That is mean. That is me indulging anger. If I indulge the anger, yeah. the anger will get worse. I will make this worse. So what I need to do is pull away. Like uh-huh. stop, drop, and roll. Stop what you're doing. Yeah. Okay? Drop everything and roll away from it. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you can start to, like, sometimes you want to be petty. I get it. Yeah. However, it doesn't bring you anything. It brings you no joy. It brings you nothing than what fries would do. A shitty poop at 2 a.m. because you ate the fries. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're going to end up dealing with those negative consequences of the indulgence that you take. So start looking at it as the enemy. It's the wrong way to be. It is the wrong Sarah to be. Yeah. Sarah doesn't have to be petty because Sarah can control her anger. And wouldn't you know, when you turn the other cheek enough, it becomes the behavior that you practice. Mm-hmm. Like when you're not petty anymore, mm-hmm. you don't have the petty thought. Like when you consciously work to not being petty, eventually it's just like it a new be. behavior style occurs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like I don't reach for a bottle anymore when I'm upset. And I've done that long enough and I've viewed it critically enough that when I'm upset, I'm less likely to reach for a bottle as a solution because a bottle is not a solution to me anymore. Pettiness cannot be your solution in the moment anymore because that contributes to a negative behavior set. That pushes you down the wrong way and that lets you feed into negative behavior that upsets you, that makes you potentially feel worse. Um, There's the negative repercussions of that pettiness. There's the distance you've created with that person that maybe you didn't want to make it. You had a momentary slip, slip up where you damaged a relationship, where you damaged yourself because it felt good in the moment. Yeah, and that's just it. it. It always, it's always, I think it's because if you're depressed and anxious, you are constantly seeking the serotonin, the dopamine, the hit. Yeah. And so in a way you're like, ooh, being petty would be so good because I'll feel better. Really, it's not going to make you feel better in the long run. No. So it is fries. about tra- changing your brain to go, that, that would be easy to do, but it's not going to help me. No, it's not. And... And getting there is hard, I gotta say. It's getting to that point is a hard point to get to. It's hard because we're not taught how to do that. No. Should like, you gotta go to therapy to learn that shit. Or you gotta read a book. Or you gotta like go to a program. We're not taught to review, to reflect. We're we're just taught to feel like we're good people and to succeed. Mm-hmm. And so if you can consciously start to review yourself mm-hmm. on a regular timetable, like that's all therapy kind of is. It's talking to a head that sits in front of you that, that you asks give him, you yeah. questions about yourself. Yeah. And you just right. explore. Like you don't have to have a therapist to do that. You can just take a book. Is a therapist better at it? Probably. But does it matter if you're doing something that you were not doing before and you see positive dividends? Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So like anyone listening, uh, you seriously take an hour a week. Yeah. Um, Doesn't even need to be an hour. Take 30 minutes, two days, 20 minutes, a couple of days, like whatever breakdown you have to do. But like write down your fears. Write down who you resent. Write down your responsibility, how it affected you, what emotions you know were affected. I can send you a template if you Please would like. Please do. I um, love that. Like, it's one of those things where if you start to do this, mm-hmm. like, it's self-improvement. Like, mm-hmm. not in the trite sense of the, like, I read a book. Like, it's enacting without questioning. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not telling you this is the best system in the world. I'm telling you this is the system that I use and it is a system. It is a system. That exists. I'm not yeah. saying be a shitty Buddhist. I am saying that <laughs> I, I have a system that works for me. Yeah. And it has given me positive dividends. Is there a better system? I don't know because I don't look because I have a good enough one. Well, I you got to find 80%. the one that's for you. I have. Do yeah. you? Yeah. Do you? Pick one. Yeah. Just pick one 
and go with it and dedicate yourself to it. Don't allow yourself to question if there's a better one. Pick a system, pick a principle, pick a thing you're going to do, and then do it for a long time and gauge on if it actually gives you positive results. But you don't get to research a whole bunch and you don't get to find the next best way. You pick a system, you go with the system, you stick with it, you see how it turns out because self-improvement is not the best tricks and tips and it's not in a day. It is yeah. literal months and oh years. God, I've been yeah. in and out of the program five years. Wow. Okay. And I've been in and out, in and out. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those things where like you will never be perfect. But if you blindly follow a system yeah. that other people have seen it work out with, mm -hmm. you may blindly get results. Mm -hmm. And those results are better than what you are doing now. It doesn't need to be the best. It doesn't need to be optimized. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just do something. Do something. Do something that is self-centric, that is yes. about you, your actions, your behaviors. Don't worry about anybody else. Don't worry about how it was really their fault and you should get them back and they owe you apologies and... Fuck that. Who do you yeah. owe an apology to? Who have you treated badly? Why did you react the way that you did? Why did you expect them to support you? Um, you mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. the goal of it, mm -hmm. right? And then once you have that, you can kind of start to see you're good, you're bad, you're other. I'm not saying just do an inventory of the bad things. Okay, you want to, you're supportive. You're, those are things too, mm -hmm. right? You write those down, but sometimes your positives can also be born out of fear. Like I'm super helpful. That is potentially related to the fact that I drive self-worth by productivity because I was raised to work. So, like, if I am not actively helping you, I am not actively advancing you, I view that as less. Right. And that is a bad trait. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, yeah. If you're help. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole other thing. Co codependency. Oof, big yeah. one. Big so, one. But, but you can know it's codependent. Mm -hmm. But, like, what's more important is why do you engage in codependency? Mm-hmm. And if you can't answer that and you can't tell me what fear and what root cause it is, you are never going to stop doing it. Mm -hmm. And like at this point, like we're not young. No. <laughs> okay? I, I can't continue to be a drunk that ruins my life yeah. and that is shitty to people. Yeah. You can't keep going and being emotionally deprived yeah. and and laughing it off. Right. Like, That's right. Yeah. It, it's it's should have got off the pot. Yeah. And I think that this, the, the lot, I mean, not, maybe not for you, but for me anyways, the lockdown and having to face so many emotions, um, without the crutch of a job, yep. um, and like just being totally all my routines out the window kind of thing has been crazy supercharged in terms of like, there's a lot going on. There's a lot yep. of self reflection, um, like self-reflection and then also because of like all the world events happening yeah. and like all and then so i have to deal with that too so like, it's just it's just this yeah. really crazy time for a lot of people where right. it's this weird pause but also like your brain's just constantly going and we're also taking in so well, much information stopped, but like you're still getting older that's right like and i i will be honest like i clearly benefit from some privilege like i i have a home to live in um i work remotely um, I'm overly yeah. educated because I had like just advantages in getting into that. Um, I am unaffected by this largely because like I am in a class of people that is not yeah. affected by this. Yeah. And in having said that, it's like when I look at everybody else, like, yeah, y'all had it way worse than I did. Mm -hmm. Um, I have worked steady this whole time uh, the largest sale that I closed, um, was the largest sale in company history directly related to COVID. Right. So, like, I have actually profited off, off this. COVID. Right. Like, this world getting harder was good for me and a couple of people I know. But for the most part, it's been terrible for everyone. So many, yeah. So it's like, it's one of, I don't even like saying that out loud because people hate that <laughs> shit. You recognize it. That's being self-aware. That's, yeah. some, that's better than not being self-aware. Like, and then also, like, do you like this is a lot of time where you can work on yourself like it's hard though because like if you have nothing to work on but yourself it can be terrible that's that's where i've been yeah <laughs> well that was like so that's where i've been <laughs> isolation is is a large part of my relapses 
Okay, so like I, if I am pulling back, if I am avoiding people, if I am not engaging socially, odds are I am going to relapse simply because I do not have a social life or I'm not engaging. I'm distancing myself from people. I'm putting myself at odds or at, at risk. Um, it's not just working the program, going to meetings or whatever program you're in. It's yeah. also like if I choose to isolate. So like when you are forced into isolation, like that is a very unhealthy thing for a lot yep. of people. And so there's two things that can come out of this. You take care of yourself, which is a lot, or you fall apart. <laughs> and it's really easy to fall apart when there's just not much routine. So interesting because I have seen both sides of that. I have seen the later side in me because I definitely fall apart. Yeah. Um, but I have also seen people thrive like blossom yeah. because of it. And it's just it's just really interesting everybody's going to handle this shit differently. Um, but like a good level of self-awareness lets you assess why you are reacting the way that you are. Cause that's really the only thing that should matter to you. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I know that everyone's like, Oh, you should love everybody. Like I'm clearly just telling everybody to be selfish, but like, if you want to get better, that's a selfish action. Getting yes. Be- it benefits everybody else. Okay? Getting better is a selfish action. Getting better. Yeah. Focusing just on yourself. Like we are trained that being about yourself is selfish. That's totally okay. Mm -hmm. If you want to get where you want to get in life, you have to be the fucking priority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't have the friends that I, like. I don't have a huge circle of friends anymore, partially because I was a piece of shit while drinking, but also because I chose to leave a lot of those relationships behind because I had to put a lot of time into me or the things that I wanted. So like going to school as much as I did, dating exclusively. Like if you're spending your time with one person, guess what? You're not going to comedy shows. You're not going to bars. You're changing your fucking life for those people. Like that's every relationship ever. Mm -hmm. You make compromises. Mm -hmm. And so like you have to find someone that is worth those compromises. But you also then have to accept that those compromises are going to come and that that person, you're choosing that person as a priority over other people. Yeah. Like, and I'm not even just saying in an exclusive relationship. If you're poly and you're dating two people, you're dating those two people, and you're probably not talking to as many people or going to as many things that are not centric to those people. You're making a bargain and a deal with anyone you bring into your life or yourself. You're giving them a higher status, and you're putting everyone else lower because that's what you have to do to get ahead for yourself and in a relationship. And so, like, the yourself comes first. Right. A relationship isn't this magic thing that fixes you. Uh, to every woman that ever dated me, sorry. Um, <laughs> dating me was a terrible fucking idea, I bet. Um, and it's one of those things where it's like I didn't always give the people I dated or the people in my life enough attention, but it was driven by a need to not be alone. So like when you have multiple interactions, multiple friendships, and a, a slew of people, it's like you probably aren't doing a great job of maintaining a few key relationships. Like you're trying to be really broad when you need to be really deep. Mm. Like you're not going to get anywhere by knowing a thousand people kind of okay. But if you know five people really well. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, I, I love that idea of like keeping a smaller circle. And I also am a firm believer in recognizing when you maybe shouldn't be dating. Like when you have to actually be working on yourself to be that better version for your future partner. Well, don't view it as for your future partner. But also also for you. But just for you. that... Nope, just you. Just you. Because if you focus on being the best you and figuring out what's wrong and why you do the things that are hurting you, you just naturally become... That better person. That better person. And you're right. like... And yeah, do it for whatever motivates you. But at the core of it, if you're getting sober, if you're dealing with an addiction, if you're dealing with bad behavior, you come first because you're the only actor. Yeah. And then once you are a better you, you will just find, like, everyone's like, oh, it just magically happens. Yeah, it magically happens if you're a great fucking person working on yourself because those are the kind of people that people get drawn to. Like, I don't try and date. Yeah. Like, I don't actively, like, I have dating profiles, but for the most part, like, anything that comes my way generally is a long game. It generally just happens after a while of knowing someone, like, 
it's kind of just, I'm not a piece of shit, and I have things that work out really well, wouldn't you like to hang out with me? Generally, that becomes a yes. I'm not looking for anyone, usually. Right. Like, and when I am looking for someone, it's because I don't need them. Like, I have a great life. I will go to restaurants I like. I will take care of myself. I work out. I go for walks. I eat okay. Um... When you are doing all of those things, it's like, yeah, those are the people you want to hang out with. Like, if I regularly go to comedy or regularly work out, like, that's stuff you can talk about. Right. If, if all of your time is doing things to meet someone, yeah. you're not doing anything yeah. that is worth talking about when you meet them. That's so true. So, like, if you can be selfish but critical. Yeah. Like, if you can focus on getting better, if anyone can focus on getting better, generally speaking, everything in your life gets better. Because, mm. oh, yeah, you do take things more seriously. You don't spread yourself so thin. You focus on a few key activities. You focus on a few key people. You focus on yourself. You get rid of your bad behavior. You stop lashing out. You stop doing the bad behavior. You you realize that pettiness might be a problem for you or being emotionally in, like codependent could be a problem for you. And when you see it coming... You don't do it. And when you don't do it, the relationship stays the same or gets better. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, yeah. well, if someone was like, oh, yeah, date Sarah. Sometimes she's a little petty, but like she a good person. Da, 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 da. If Sarah was just a good person that got along with everybody and never made a petty comment, was never angry about the reactions of those petty comments, that's so much negativity and anger and like conflict that just doesn't occur in your life. Right. And so it doesn't even have to be brought up. Like people used to introduce me as this is Finley. He's really great. He's a piece of shit. He's an asshole. And I was. And like now no one for the most part has to add those last sentences. Mm. Right. Because I'm not a piece of shit because I took time to work on myself. I still got flaws. But like miles away from what they were. And no one except for a few would probably give that he's an asshole, he's a piece of shit, like I'm just a better person. Right. And like so those conversations never have to happen because I've already taken care of the problem. Right. So like be selfish. Yeah. But also get prepared to look in that mirror. Um, it's not fun. Nope. And but it's it's why we don't do it. That's why that's why so many people avoid it. Yeah. Like I, I literally wrote a note in my phone just being like, why is it so hard for certain people to navigate life? Like, why is it so hard for certain why does life feel seem harder for certain people and so much easier for other people? But did you frame when you wrote that, did you frame it in the context of someone Some else? Kind of or about um, yourself. I think that I framed it thinking about myself, but in comparison to others. Okay. So one, coveting your neighbor's wife. Just to throw <laughs> out some, some Bible stuff. Um, but like, no, it, it's one of those things where like, if you are viewing yourself to other people, why is it so much easier for them? Like, you're not asking what's making it hard for me. Here it is. Why do some people have to work so hard to be the best versions of themselves? That's what I wrote down. Okay. So versus other people that for you. who seem to not do any work at all no, and have no issues. You. Phrase it just to you. Phrase it just to me? Like how? What do you mean? That's exactly how I, I what wrote. About, what about your life is harder than theirs? What's in your way that's stopping you from getting there? Hmm. And are they even really where you think they are? I mean, probably not. Okay, so that's... But, uh, but, but I don't know. But if we talk about just you, the real thing is like, what's holding you back from being who you want? Don't care about the other person and what's making it easier for them. If you feel you have to work hard to be who you want, the question is, why are you having to work hard and what do you have to focus on to get to where you think they are? It's not about why do I have to work harder than them. It's what do I have to work on mm -hmm. to be a better you? Mm. Like if you continue to look at other people as milestones, you can yeah. look at them as inspiration. Yeah. No, but um, that's, that's an issue I have. It's an issue I'm working on for sure. Yeah. I think the inspiration thing is great. Yeah. I think looking at people who are doing similar things to you. Yeah. I think a lot of times when I compare, it's usually 
because they're happy with a partner and I'm not. Usually it's the partner, the connection aspect. Yeah. The having, they have a reliable person in their life that they can lean on and I've never had that. So yeah. that's my resentment, I think, to those people. Yeah. Um, whereas like I'm on my own and I'm on my own fighting, so in that fighting resentment. the shitty aspects of myself. So you, you feel alone, mm-hmm. okay, but in that you, you, you have some a little bit of anger. Yes. Oh, right? I have tons of anger. It's so, a huge so you issue. angers at those people and those happy things. Yeah. Okay? Now, if you look at those relationships, has that anger ever made you act out or distance yourself from that happy person, which puts you in a more negative space? It iso- Does it isolate you? Does mm. it make you bitter? Does it make you hold anger in? Does it trigger your anger? It would. Tr- it, it triggers my anger for sure. Okay. And have you ever pushed but anybody I, away because of it? Uh, not necessarily because of it. I it, I do hang out with a lot of couples. Okay. Um, and I won't depending on the couple, but <laughs> some couples I like more than others. Yeah. But no, I don't. I I don't know. I don't know. That's I don't know the answer. Yeah, to that. No, that and that's fine. I, I, that's absolutely fine. You don't yeah. need to know the answers to every one of your problems because if you did, you'd know how to fix things. Yeah. Okay, but what you have just admitted is that you sometimes have a little bit of anger in you when other people are happy. Mm-hmm. Right? Sounds pretty similar to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I would act out and do shitty things and say shitty things and have problems with relationships and at the core, that's all my issue. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so I allow that to happen to me and I allow myself to damage these relationships and friendships and I allow that to isolate myself, which makes me more resentful that they have someone and I don't. Yeah. Well, I think what happens with me is you and I can have these hard conversations Yeah. because we've had them before and there's comfort level there. But when you are someone who has been alone for so long and has done that hard work and faced hard aspects of themselves, of yourself. Like I'm just going to talk with my point of view, myself. I've faced the hard aspects of myself. I have more friends. Like the friends that I can consider close are the ones like you. I can have these hard conversations with you. Someone like them who's had a consistent person and has never really been alone to face those aspects of themselves that might not have to do with relationships could be ego or how you treat other people, how you make other people feel small, maybe because you had a shitty childhood, stuff like that. Um, So they have that. They've never really done that and faced that. And they're not really aware of it. Like I am. And usually what will happen is, is I will call like, I will, I will call out the issue and be pushed away. Okay, so... From that person. Why do you think you should be able to bring that up? Because they hurt me. How did they hurt you? They made me feel less than. Did they willingly do it, or did you feel that way because of the circumstances of their life? Mm, I mean, they will willingly said the thing. Okay, but did they do it maliciously, or is it just talking matter-of-fact about their life? Who knows? I don't know. Do you think I, I, I don't know. consciously try to hurt you? Um, no... Not really. I think with this person, um, if I could put a theory on it, it's she does this to a lot of people. Okay. So she makes a lot of people feel smaller than a lot of people feel smaller than why do you keep interacting with her? I'm, I mean, I'm not anymore, but it's, but again, it's one of those resentments that I have, but that hasn't been like, and resolved. that resentment's there, but why do you want a resolution to it? You need to examine it and you need to see why you permitted I, the behavior. But past that. I know why. It's because I've lost a lot of friendships over this and similar situations. Yeah. I've lost a lot of friends that I would say I used to be very close with just on the basis of like how long I've known these people. Yeah. Like, you know, you know how you have friends that you've known like since like yeah. junior high or high school. Yeah. And so there's like this weird hierarchy that you see them like, like yeah. they're an important yeah. part of your life. Cause they've been your friend for a huge chunk of it. Yeah. But all of a sudden we're all growing, we're all evolving and here I am growing and evolving. And then this like kind of conflict happens yeah. where we separate as friends I think with me, the reason I still think about those friendships 
rather than just like being like whatever they're done i gotta just gotta move on and be me is because i sometimes feel bad that i might have been the one to fuck it up or like i don't know maybe i didn't do enough to fight for the friendship what does that guilt bring you if you're not consciously nothing looking at it and and figuring out a way to resolve it like long term in the future Mm -hmm. okay then that guilt brings you nothing other than guilt that really, anger brings you nothing other than anger. Yeah. It is useless emotion. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. If you want to have that feeling, open a notebook, write it down, and then think about, did you overly permit it? Did you not cut that friendship off when you should have? Friends aren't fucking professors. They don't earn tenure. Yeah. <laughs> okay? If you want a <laughs> negative a person to out of your life, you get yeah. them out of your life. If you don't think that your friendship is working anymore, don't have that friendship anymore. Yeah. Okay. If you need to be selfish to be better, do it. But yeah. also, if you see a correlation of this happens, this is the outcome. This happens, this is the outcome. You really do need to write them down and yeah. review it because yeah. no one likes this sentence and I'm super sorry. If you go outside and you meet an asshole, they're the asshole. If you go outside and all you meet is assholes, you're, you're the, the asshole. asshole. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if it keeps happening, yeah. you either overly permit something Mm-hmm. Or are you overly engaged with something and you don't realize it's going to hurt you, which you could control, uh-huh. or you're getting mad and holding something against someone that they really didn't mean to do. Right. So it's one of those one two of those or it's some other yeah. outcomes. I don't know. Yeah. I, can't, but- uh, I think that I'm, I'm, I can be too much of a fighter sometimes in terms of, I'm, I mean that in both ways, <laughs> fighter in terms of conflict, but also fighter in terms of I stick things out way more than other people stick things out in friendships and relationships. Yeah. And right. so if if you're not fighting for it like I am, you yeah. obviously don't want this friendship as much as me and I should not be in it. So yeah, but like, do you look at this as sunk cost fallacy too? Like, do you see like, oh, well, it's 12 years of friendship and I really should keep it going because 12 years of friendship and... Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I have so many yeah, of those. You ever have a shitty car? I've never owned a car. Okay, will you ever own a shitty thing? Um... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, have you ever, like, if, if your computer broke tomorrow. I've owned okay. a, sh- yes, I have. I've okay. owned a shitty thing. You can keep throwing money into it. Yeah. But there's a certain point where you need a new computer. That's right. Okay. Computers cost you economic money. Yeah. People cost you time and energy. Mm-hmm. And if you need a new computer, go get a new computer. Yeah. Stop trying to fix because you put so much money into it and it's so old. Yeah. And I mean, that's th- uh, that's also a huge thing that I've learned as well, which is hanging around the people that are like me. And Ooh. I think comic friends have become my main friends yeah. lately just because we kind of look at the world in the same way. Yeah. And that's and even just having the like me saying a thought and having it not be argued is has been yeah. amazing. Now we should probably wrap this up. We are gonna wrap. To go to a show. We are gonna wrap. Thank you so much for coming on for, for this therapy me. session. It's always great. I know. Um. Yeah. Thanks so much. I guess uh, if you want people to follow you, you can. Nope. <laughs> I'm Mark, motherfuckers. <laughs> no. Uh, I have no following. Personal life. You stay away from my social media profiles. Um, don't need I don't. Name attached so to this. You can follow me, Sarah Mackle. Um, and also, if you'd like an OnlyFans link, message me and I will consider sending you it. Make that money. Because uh, now if I know you very well, I'll have to think about that because uh, that's weird. But uh, also, no, <coughs> no throwaway accounts. No. Don't fucking message me with a username, no pictures and no followers and no posts and expect me to send you my naked body. That's not going to happen. If you are someone who knows me through the podcast or knows me through social media with a face and an identity, feel free to message me. (laughs) These are the rules because you have to set rules. You have to set rules because also I'm not going to be engaging in sexting. Uh, on Instagram because you have my OnlyFans. So do what you want with the pictures, but don't fucking tell me shit. Uh, I do. Yeah, every like, I absolutely love anytime. Like, there's look, there's a difference between getting a picture and them wanting a reaction and them sending you pity tits. So, like, if you're getting pity tits, you don't... Wait, wait, what are pity tits? Pity tits? Like, I'm just going to send these tits to my friend. 
There's no rom- romantic anything. There's no just here's some tits. Here's some tits. Right. Enjoy the tits. Well, my I, at that I've... point you don't want to hear about enjoying of the tits. I'm just giving you something. It's a one direction thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and for me, it's like I I feel like doing this. I mean, other than just being terribly broke, and it's a revenue form. It's me going. Oh, uh, I've sent these pictures to guys that don't appreciate them. So now I'm gonna send them to people who do appreciate exactly. them in the form of money, because exactly. that is a form of appreciation. That is the only and form. It's that you nothing want. to be ashamed about. Nope. So uh, don't just fucking slut shame me, because I've I've gotten those. Instagram but you're comments, more than and your I body. will come for you. Fuck I will off. fucking come for you. You're more than your buddy. Fuck off. Yeah. Fuck yeah, off. Yeah, go fuck. That thirst trap rant oh that I went God. on was one of my favorite moments great. in my life because holy shit. This is why our episodes go long because we can't cut off. It's, it, I just, I, please men, stop sending me self-help quotes. I will look at the self-help quotes every other hour of the day when I want to be slutty and be appreciated for being hot. That is not the time to tell me that I'm creative and smart. If if you feel like um actually is like the way you want to go out flirting, fucking don't. <gasps> ah! Fucking don't. Sometimes people just want to be viewed as an object. Yes. It's totally okay. And sometimes they're just willing to let you pay to see them as an object and they don't want anything back from you. I don't want to hear a thing. Yeah. And I know that I'm going to just get people signed up for one month because of the curiosity factor. And that's why I'm charging a higher price because in the end... I want money. Yeah. And in all honesty, like a boner is nothing special. Like they occur multiple times a day. Um, you don't, if you get one from her pictures, you don't need to tell her. Don't fucking, t- I will block the message. Yeah. I unless she specifically sent the photo directly to you and it was a flirty relationship talk. If it was just like, here's some pity tits, like no one wants to know. I don't think I've ever said pity tits. No, it's a great term, but like you've sent pity tits. Do you? Oh, fuck. <laughs> And what did I do? And what did I do? Not fucking make a comment other than like nice, like because yeah. that's the correct only response. You leave you need. it at that. Yeah. You leave it at that, and then that's it. And yeah. And oh, I jerked off to that. No, no one wants that. Don't. No one wants that. The best OnlyFans person will take the link, sign up, and just not say shit to me after, or maybe say good job, because I can't seem to get the header to fit the header on the site. I. I once <laughs> consulted with a girl that was doing online uh, video work and I had her Snapchat and like premium. Yeah. I had her premium Snapchat. Yeah. Be- and honestly it was to vet content. And the only things I sent her was you didn't include a click through link. Um, you didn't reference link in the bio. You didn't put your price point. You didn't try and convert them. Like these are photos of her naked. And I'm <laughs> literally being like, um, you need to put, the call to action here and you need to have the link in the bio you need to be converting because otherwise it's just porn that doesn't make you money and literally the reaction of that woman was hilarious see um well i mean it's it it is hard to navigate because for me i don't want to i don't want to publicly share my link i only want people to request it yeah and and i don't know if that's the best way to sell it but anyway 85 percent. you're doing it it's Mm -hmm. working you have some income. That's all you need well, to worry about. Well, not yet. I, like, I have to... The fucking header. Um. <laughs> oh, what's that about wanting it to be 100% perfect before you go live? What, what is that? I, I'm also scared shitless. Let's anyway. be honest here. If someone can see your tits, they're not looking at a header. No, but if, they, if they're considering signing up and they're going to the landing page if they've to look at up, the... They've already privately requested the link from you which means they're an already Dave. qualified lead which yeah. means they're likely to convert so any content on that page is yeah. ancillary to the conversion what yeah. you need to do is start pushing the link i'm not telling you you need to do this you do it however you want you be comfortable in everything that you do i'm only saying from a business perspective worrying about the header is 100 <laughs> percent shit and we don't do 100 percent shit here we do we 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 don't do 100 percent shit here there you go that's the new slogan for intoxicating <laughs> oh man okay thank you buddy for coming on we're gonna end this shit and you get to ring that bell that was a good one